Kentucky in Lexington, where the skies are perfectly clear with not a cloud in sight. 
brilliant sunshiny day. With the fans here on the southern side of the jam-packed stall field in McLean Stadium, uh, in the shade with coats on. And across the way in the sun-bathed northern side of the stadium, many, many fans in shirt sleeves for the big game this afternoon. Because this is it. Kentucky versus Tennessee. A game that comes once a year and packs a wallet for Christmas. It's been the same story since 1893. A gridiron rivalry that carries with it more color, more glory, more prestige than any football game around the country. These two great neighboring universities have acquired friends and followers in distant parts of the nation that probably never have seen the two states, but nonetheless rise up to the annual November battle. This afternoon's game has only one strange aspect. The Wildcats of Kentucky are favored to win. Tennessee and Kentucky coaches down through the years have wanted to be the underdog. That role has seemingly been most favorable for a victory. Last year's underdog Wildcats rose up to score two touchdowns in the bows in the final five minutes for their biggest point production since 1935's win by 27 to nothing. This Tennessee game carries with it some added points for Kentucky followers because this is homecoming. Seldom in the past has Kentucky used the Tennessee game as the vehicle for homecoming. For the balls, it's old stuff. This is the fourth straight homecoming game they've appeared in this season, and they've won them all. Everyone here this afternoon is doggedly pulling for Kentucky or Tennessee. We imagine there are very, very few fans in the stadium just looking for a good football game. And the prize for the winner will probably be their pick of the Cotton or Sugar Bowl. And should the Wildcats come off with a win, they remain in the picture for a conference championship. Now let's set the stage for the kickoff as the University of Tennessee band, the pride of the South band, has just rolled out on the small field, which is uh, very, very dry, with the carpet having been placed on it yesterday. Uh, in setting the stage, where for the kickoff, which is still about 10 minutes away, the visiting involved of Tennessee are expected to line up this way. At left end will be Captain Mac Franklin from Madisonville, Tennessee. Franklin is 6'2", weighs 180, and a 21-year-old senior. At left tackle will be Bob Fisher from Cleveland, Ohio. He stands 6 feet, weighs 205, and a 21-year-old senior. At left guard will be Frank McCroskey from Sevierville, Tennessee. That is capital MC, capital C-R-O-S-K-E-Y. McCroskey stands 5'11", weighs 190, he's a 21-year-old senior. At center is Bob Cloninger, C-L-O-N-I-N-G-E-R from Chattanooga. Cloninger stands 6'1", weighs 190 pounds, he's a 21-year-old senior. At right side guard will be John Powell from Mount Pleasant, Tennessee, a 21-year-old senior. Powell stands 5'11", weighs 185. At right tackle is Darius McCord from Franklin, Tennessee. McCord is 6'3", weighs 210, he's a 21-year-old junior. And at right end is Roger Lockwell, who has one touchdown. He's caught eight passes for 157 yards. He's from Glendale, Ohio. R-O-T, R-O-F-F. Rockwell, 5'10", weighs 185, a 23-year-old senior, small but extremely aggressive, who turned the tide in the favor of Tennessee against Florida at the Gators homecoming last Saturday afternoon in Gainesville when he blocked the punt and recovered a fumble. Hold on, and Disney. Tennessee backfield and tailback will be Jimmy Wade from Lynchburg, Tennessee, who is the leading scorer with 36 points. Wade is 5'11 and weighs 165. He's a 21-year-old junior. In the matter of punt returns, Jimmy Wade has carried 12 of them back, 140 yards, an average of 11.6 per punt return. In passing, Wade, in rushing rather, Wade has carried the ball 118 times and has a net gain of 510 yards. His average is 4.3. Passing, Wade has grown 39 and completed 17 of them for 325 yards and four touchdowns. In the matter of kickoff returns, Wade has brought four back for 84 yards, averaging 21 a return. And in putting, Wade has putted 30 times for 913 yards. He's averaging 30.4. At the Tennessee blocking back will be Bill Barbish from Cleveland, Ohio. B-A-R-B-I-S-H. Barbish is 5'9 and weighs 190, a 22-year-old senior. 
At Tennessee fullback is Ted Schwanger from Sandusky, Ohio. He has two touchdowns and 12 points. That is S-C-H-W-A-N-G-E-R. Schwanger is 6'2", weighs 185, a sophomore. He's only 19 years old. In rushing, Schwanger has carried the ball 59 times and gained 276 yards, a 4.6 average. And in kickoff returns, he's brought three of them back 78 yards, an average of 26 per return. And outside the end of Tennessee's weighing back will be Jerry Hyde from Fort Wayne, Indiana, who stands 5'11 and weighs 175. Hyde is a 22-year-old senior who spells his name H-Y-D-E. In rushing, Hyde has carried the ball 23 times for 44 yards, an average of only 1.9. Most of Hyde's runs have been off the weak side. In pass receiving, though, Hyde has caught four passes for three touchdowns and an overall gain of 103 yards. Tennessee has a record of five wins, two losses, and one tie. And the Wildcats have six wins, two losses, and one tie. And both teams, after losing their openers of the season, have come on very strong and are undefeated since losing their two openers. The wind this afternoon is varying 12 to 16 miles an hour, and it is coming out of the south, which means it's blowing almost across the field. And uh, we don't imagine it's going to favor either team in the matter of uh, kicking or receiving. And the temperature at the moment here in Lexington, Kentucky, stands at 64 degrees, and the humidity is a mere 36%. To give you the setting for a very, very perfect Kentucky-Tennessee day. And as the volunteer band down on the field continues to perform, let us switch over and give you the setting now for the Kentucky Wildcats, who at left end will be starting Howard Schnellenberger, a 19-year-old sophomore from Louisville Flash A, who's caught two touchdown passes, has 12 points. Schnellenberger stands 6'2", weighs 190, and at the left tackle for the Wildcats, Duke Cornute, a 20-year-old sophomore from Ashland. Cornute is 5'10", and weighs 185. At Kentucky's left guard will be the great co-captain Ray Carell, playing his final game for the Kentucky Wildcats. Carell is 6'1", weighs 205, and a 22-year-old senior. At center is Tommy Atkins, co-captain, who has scored two points on extra point attempts. He's from Corbin and stands 6'1", weighs 197. Atkins, a 21-year-old senior. At right guard will be Joe Cook from Louisville St. X, who is 5'10", weighs 182. He's a 19-year-old junior. At Kentucky's right tackle will be Harry Kirk from Mount Sterling, a 20-year-old junior who stands 6'4 and weighs 195. At Kentucky's right end from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Al Zampino, who has scored two touchdowns along with the left end Schnellenberger. Zampino is 6 feet tall, weighs 185. He's a 22-year-old senior. And here's Kentucky's split tee backfield. At quarterback will be Bob Hardy from Paducah Tillman. Hardy is 6'1", weighs 180, a 20-year-old sophomore. Bob Hardy has completed 22 of 41 passes, has had three intercepted, but five have gone for touchdowns. Hardy's passing yardage gained is 391 yards. In rushing, Hardy has carried the ball 63 times, gained 185 yards, an average of 1.2. At left halfback from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Steve Meilinger, the 22-year-old senior who has 24 points. Meilinger is 6'3 and weighs 220. Hardy is Kentucky's top scorer with 28 points. Meilinger, uh, in the matter of intercepted passes, he's picked off four of them in a safety position where he is normally stationed defensively. He has returned seven kickoffs for 127 yards, an average of 18.1. He has caught 17 passes, gaining 296 yards, and has scored three touchdowns on passes. Meilinger has carried the ball 64 times for 291 yards, an average of four and a half per trip. And in punting, Steve has kicked the ball 34 times for 1,254 yards, averaging 36.6 per kick. At Kentucky's right halfback will be Joe Platt from Kokomo, Indiana, with 18 points. Platt is 5'11", weighs 175. He's a 22-year-old senior who has intercepted two passes for 85 yards returned and one touchdown. Platt has carried the ball 29 times, gained 271 yards, an average of 9.3 per trip, and he's caught four passes for 84 yards. At fullback for the Kentucky Wildcats is Ralph Pallone, who has 24 points along with Meilinger. Pallone stands 6'1", weighs 205, as a 22-year-old senior from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Ralph Pallone has carried the ball 96 times, gained 552 yards, an average of 5.7. In the matter of passes, he's caught two, 
for 25 yards and scored one touchdown. So that's the way the two teams will line up, ladies and gentlemen. Now we pause for our prayer for world peace and our national anthem. Heavenly Father, we give thee thanks for the many blessings which thou hast given us. Yet may we be ever conscious of others who have blessed or which to be thankful. Help us to realize that only through peace and understanding can we hope to build a better world of brotherhood. We pray this moment that such goals may be achieved. Amen. National anthem played by the University of Tennessee's Pride of the Southland Band. Now with kickoff time just a minute or so away, and as we stand by for the meeting in the center of the field between Tommy Atkins and Ray Correll, Kentucky's co-captains, with Mac Franklin, the big 6-2 captain of the University of Tennessee. The Tennessee Volunteers today in their year-round uniforms, white pants, white headgears with the light orange jersey and the white numbers which are right difficult to see, especially on a brilliant, sunshiny afternoon. Kentucky is in what's becoming rapidly a standard University of Kentucky football uniform, white pants, white headgears, and those dark blue jerseys with white numerals. And uh, in just a moment, we have the meeting between the captains, Ray Correll, Tommy Atkins, moving out from across the way. And from the southern side of the field is Captain Mac Franklin of Tennessee. As the Volunteers' offensive team takes warm-up drills on this near southern side of the field, two units of them, Tennessee is 37 men strong here this afternoon, and Kentucky has a 47-man bench. Now the handshakes down in the center of the field. Let's see who wins the toss as the coin is uh, about ready to be flipped. Tennessee will quite often win the toss and elect to, to uh, kick off, which would seem to indicate that Kentucky this afternoon will be handling the ball first. Here's the coin flipped up, and the winner of the flip is the Kentucky Wildcats. And let's see what Tommy Atkins and Ray Correll want to do. They want to receive. Kentucky has elected to receive. Tennessee will kick off and defend the goal to our right, which is the eastern goal. So that's the way it lines up, as Tennessee will have the sun, what there is of it, in their face here during the first and fourth quarter of play. Now, as we wait for kickoff time, just a couple of seconds away, let's take 20 seconds for station identification. This is the Standard Oil Sports Network. And WVOK, Lexington. Once again, this is Claude Sullivan speaking for our broadcast booth above Stahl Field in Lexington, Kentucky, where Tennessee and Kentucky are about to go after each other in this great football game on November the 21st. This is the last game for 11 of Kentucky's men. Tom Harper, Steve Meilinger, Jim Prophet, Herbie Hunt, Miles Willard, Joe Platt, Tom Fillion, Ralph Pallone, Tommy Atkins, Ray Correll, and Jim Schenck all playing their final game at Stahl Field. Those 11 are seniors and will depart at the end of this 1953 football season, which could end up in a bowl game if Kentucky is able to beat Tennessee this afternoon. It looks like Bob Fisher, the senior tackle from Cleveland, Ohio, will be kicking off for the Volunteers from the 40. Jimmy Wade standing out at the ball at the moment with Fisher. A brilliant, sunshiny day with the skies cloudy, a uh, uh, void of a single cloud, rather. And across the way, almost the entire uh, south side, north side, rather, is jam-packed with shirt sleeve football fans. 
Meilinger goes back deep for the Wildcats. He's standing at the five-yard line with Joe Platt off on his right and Ralph Cologne off on his left, about ten yards off on each side. Bob Fisher back, Jimmy Wade holding, Fisher moves forward, the ball game is underway. Platt moves up, Zampino touches it, Platt gets it at the 20, out to the 25, is cut down off his feet as he falls up to the 26 in this near southern side zone. Nice play by Captain Mac Franklin of Tennessee, who hit Platt ankle high. Platt went about uh, two or three yards through the air before he contacted ground at the Kentucky 26. So the ball game is underway. This is it. Kentucky, 18 yards out from this side of the field on its 26. First down and 10. Wildcats line split. The backfield straightaway is Bob Hardy. Moe's in. Call signals behind Tommy Atkins. Gets. Moe's left. Keeps. Pitches back to Platt. He comes on out to the 27, 28, and is dropped down to the right side of the Tennessee line. Platt juggled the ball for a moment as Bob Hardy pitched it back a little high. The trailer, right halfback Joe Platt got it and advanced it to the 28 for a gain of two yards. He was tackled by Bob Cloninger backing the Tennessee line on the left side. Second down and eight for the Wildcats. From the open huddle, they move up to the line of scrimmage. The Kentucky 28, the ball almost in the center of the field. Backfield straight away. Hardy calling signals against a six-man Tennessee line. He keeps, mows left, comes out past the 30, up to the 35, 36, 37, 38, and on out to the 39 for a first down. Bob Hardy keeping, angling outside Tennessee's left tackle. Bill Barbish made the tackle. Beautiful play by Bob Hardy as he has mowed the pigskin out to the Wildcat 39 on a run of 11 yards. First down and 10 as Kentucky is able to go 13 yards on its first two plays. A two-yard run by Joe Platt, an 11-yard run by Bob Hardy. The ball 20 yards out from across the way as Hardy lines him up. Backfield straight away with a line split. Hardy takes, fakes a pass, gives. Cologne lashes up to the 45. Cutting outside Tennessee's right guard. He was caught by Barbish, the linebacker, and help from John Powell, the big right guard. Beautiful play by Bob Hardy as he handed off to Ralph Pallone on a spinner. And Pallone came upfield six yards to the 45. Second down and four for the Wildcats have moved upfield now from their 26 where they received the kickoff as Joe Platt moved it up from the 20 to the 26. The ball is 18 yards out from the northern side as Platt, uh, the halfback, is in tight. The hand off to Pallone. He angles outside. Tackle comes on up to about the 48. The left side of the Tennessee line diving for him. And the tackle was made by Ted Schwanger, the fullback, and John Powell, the right guard. The ball is very close to a first down, about a foot shy, up on the 48 after that three-yard gain. So it's third down for the Wildcats, a foot to go, and here's a big play coming out. Can Kentucky keep possession? Backfield straight away as Hardy moves in against the seven-diamond defense. Hardy takes, keeps, goes right to the 50, down to the 49. It's first down for the Wildcats. Bob Hardy was caught by Cloninger, and that's the second straight first down. Kentucky has reeled off. There's the roar from the fans as they say it's a first down on the Tennessee 49. Kentucky has moved the ball 25 yards. Five plays gone. They're averaging five yards a trip. No passes so far. Hardy on the Tennessee 49 for the Wildcats now. Keeps his backfield straight away. Tennessee in the seven-man line. Hardy takes. Belly play. He keeps moving outside left end. Down to the 45. Down to the 40. Pitches back to Platt who fumbles. The ball is out of bounds, we believe. The ball went out of bounds away from Joe Platt. And Tennessee did not have an opportunity to recover the fumble by Joe Platt. The ball was out of bounds in the 35. Bill Barbish went for it, but it was a dead ball. And Kentucky gets it down on the Tennessee 35, where it is another first down. And Bob Hardy keeping and pitching back to Platt is able to eat up 14 yards. Three straight first downs for the Wildcats as they're on the Tennessee 35. First down and 10, the Volunteers have called timeout. Stopping the clock with 11 minutes and 40 seconds here in the first quarter of play. And the fans now up on their toes to see if the Wildcats can keep going at this tremendous pace they've reeled off here in the early stages of the football game. They've gone six plays and moved from their 26 down to the Tennessee 35. Here's some other late scores for you from around the country. At the half, Holy Cross leads Fordham 14 to nothing. There is no score between Temple and Boston. At the end of the first quarter, no score between Michigan and Ohio State. At the end of the quarter, no score between Penn State and Pittsburgh. At the quarter, Princeton leads Dartmouth 12 to 7. Columbia leads Rutgers 7 0. No score yet between Yale and Harvard at the end of the first quarter. And in the second quarter, Michigan State 14, Marquette nothing. Those are late scores. Temperature 64 here at Lexington. Humidity only 36% on this very, very fine game. Kentucky's on the Tennessee 35 at the hash mark. First down and 10. 
Wildcats moving back to the line of scrimmage. Tennessee in the seven diamond defense, shifting out to a 6 2. As Hardy calls signals, he moves right, fakes to Pallone, keeps running out in the right flat, looking for the man. Pass lobbed down for the corner to 25 by Platt, down to the 20, and he's out of bounds. It's another first down. As Bob Hardy kept moving out in this right flat, he hits Joe Platt down to the 25. Platt was jumped out of bounds by Ted Twanger on the 20, and there's a Tennessee injury on the play. It's Twanger, the big fullback, that is down, and Mickey O'Brien, the trainer, comes off the Tennessee bench. The ball is spotted out on the Tennessee 20-yard line as the pass is it for 15 yards from Bob Hardy to little Joe Platt, the right halfback. It's first down and 10 for the Wildcats on the Tennessee 20. Wildcats still moving. Tom Tracy is coming into the Tennessee backfield at fullback. Ted Swanger is coming out. There are 11 minutes and 32 seconds in this first quarter of play. There are two men up on top of the scoreboard here at Stall Field, the first time we've ever seen that. We're unable to say whether there are electricians on hand to see if anything should go wrong with the clock this weekend, as it did last Saturday afternoon with Memphis State, or whether maybe there are two fans out of the end zone that decided for a little higher perch. Bob Cox with the field glasses has just spotted him, and one of the gentlemen is Bill McCubbin. Come here at the University of Kentucky. He's up there with field glasses and a telephone, which means he's doing some work for the Kentucky bench. The Wildcats coaching staff is all here today, headed by Bear Bryant, backed up by Buckshot Underwood, Pat James, Jim Owens, Ermel Allen, Jerry Claiborne, and Phil Cutchin. Here's Hugh Garner coming into the Tennessee lineup. He's a blocking back. It is Schwanger that's coming out. Garner is from La Folla, Tennessee. He's 5'9", weighs 162, a 19-year-old junior. Here's the way the stage sets as we go back to play. Kentucky is on the Tennessee 20. Open side of the field to their left. First down and 10. Bob Hardy moves in behind Tommy Atkins. Tennessee in a 6-2-2-1 defense. Hardy takes, moves left, stumbles, looks for a man to throw to. Down in the end zone to Schnellenberger, and it is vaunted down. No good. Close play for it as Schnellenberger was in there. Jimmy Wade made a beautiful defensive maneuver as he hooked it away. Bob Hardy from the Tennessee 20 was going for the works that time. Wade cut up in front of Schnellenberger, about three or four yards deep in the end zone, and hooked it away from him. So that's the first incompleted pass in the afternoon. Second down, Kentucky, 10 yards to go from the Tennessee 20. 18 yards out from the southern side of the field. Tennessee shifts into a five-man line, back to a six. Hardy to Pallone, down to the 15, down maybe to the 14. As Ralph Pallone, the fullback, blasted straight away up the middle. Bob Cloninger made the tackle for Tennessee. He had help on the play from Ed Campbell, who's in that right end. The ball is down to the Tennessee 15-yard line. It's now third down and five for the Wildcats. Here's some big plays coming out. Hardy has his signal call from the 25 and out of the open huddle. Kentucky moves back in the line of scrimmage. The backfield is still straight away in the line split. Tennessee shifts the defense to a 6-2. Hardy takes, moves back, is hit, gives off. Cologne dives in there past the 15. There may have been a fumble. Let's see. Tennessee got it. There's the break. The Tennessee played for, and they made it. As Cologne... And Hardy and Platt all in there trying to get the handoff working. It was Bill Barbish of Tennessee that fell on it on the volunteer 15. So Kentucky was able to move from its 26 straight downfield to the Tennessee 15. The volunteers have called timeout as they have just recovered the Kentucky fumble. It looked like the Wildcats might go all the way. When they got down to the 20, an incompleted pass in the end zone for Howie Schnellenberger as Jimmy Wade batted it down. And then the Wildcats on a third down and a second down and five play. Ralph Pallone went to the 15. On the third down play, Kentucky has fumbled and Tennessee takes over. So now the Volunteers are in possession of the ball for the first time. Ten and a half minutes here in the first quarter. The line is balanced. The single wing is to the right. Kentucky is in a six-man line, almost a seven diamond now. The tailback Wade gets it, comes out to the 15. There's a fumble. Kentucky got it. Jimmy Wade gets hard, fumbles the ball. The Wildcats get it. Howie Schnellenberger got the ball back on the 17. Two quick fumbles in the ball game, one offsetting the other. Now the Wildcats are back in possession. First down and 10 on the Tennessee 17. They lost two yards but got two downs back. Here's Hardy ready to go. Open side of the field to the left. Gives off. Meilinger goes to the 10-yard line on a quick opener. Big Steve Meilinger carrying the ball for the first time this afternoon. A quick opener outside his left guard. Caught by Bob Fisher, the left tackle. 
as Big Steve Meilinger has gone into the Tennessee 10-yard line. A gain of seven on the play. It's second down and three, and the Wildcats knocking on the door from inside the Tennessee 10. The ball is almost straight away from the goal post. Right halfback Joe Platt is going to the left as a flanker. Bob Hardy mows in behind Atkins to call his signals. Gets it, mows left. Meilinger goes to the five, the four, the three, the two. And it's a first down. Kentucky Steve Meilinger, two straight plays. It just reeled off the fifth, first down. As Kentucky goes to the Tennessee two. Eight-yard gain by Meilinger. Jerry Hyde, the wing back, made the tackle. At Kentucky on the Tennessee two. First down, goal to goal. Could it be a touchdown? The backfield this time straight away. Hardy moves in behind Atkins. The line is split. Tennessee bucks up. Meilinger goes to the one, to the goal. He's over. And Kentucky leads Tennessee six to nothing. John Powell hit him at the one, and Tennessee's Powell was unable to hold as the horse went for the goal line and went over two or three feet. Joe Platt is back to hold. Bob Hardy will try for what could be an extremely important extra point. Tennessee's line bucks up now. Here's the snap. Platt places Hardy boots to kick. Good. And the score is Kentucky seven. Tennessee nothing. Listen to this. start that Kentucky has had in many a day against the Volunteers. As the Wildcats recover a Tennessee fumble on the Volunteers 17-yard line in three plays. Meilinger goes all the way. Extra point tacked on by Bob Hardy. And the score is Kentucky 7, Tennessee nothing with 9 minutes and 11 seconds still in this first quarter of play. Tennessee recovered a Kentucky fumble on the 15 as the Wildcats move consistently from their 26. Right straight downfield to the ball, 15 where the fumble and the ball's recovered and on the first play from scrimmage, Jimmy Wade uh, fumble, Schnellenberger recovering three straight plays by Meilinger were good for the touchdown. Steve kicking off, the ball laid flat on the ground, booted downfield, and the Tennessee 22 up to the 25, fumble, Barbish goes for it, they got it. Bill Barbish of Tennessee made a dive for it and got it, up on the volunteer 25 and almost got loose. Ray Corral of Kentucky made a dive for it and Barbish just barely beat him to it. The ball is up on the Tennessee 26, where the balls will take over. First down and 10. They've had one scrimmage play, which resulted in a fumble and a Kentucky touchdown. Eight minutes, 45 seconds in the first quarter here at Stallfield. A tremendous football day. Temperature at 64 and still going up. Single wing is off to the left, the open side of the field. Your line is balanced, and the Wildcats are in almost a nine-man line. Snap in there to Schwanger. Hand off to Wade. Cuts out right. Comes to the 30, and he's down. Off on the left side by Schnellenberger, the left end. Tom Tracy it was in there at fullback now. He's from Birmingham, Michigan, a 19-year-old sophomore who's 5'9 and weighs 185. And Tennessee got four yards out of it to the 30, where it is second down and six for the Volunteers. The ball is on the hash mark at Tennessee 30 from the northern side of the field. Tennessee moves up single wing right now with the open side of the field off the weak side. Kentucky is not in that three-man line so far this afternoon. They're overshifted to the left. Snap to Tracy. He comes off the weak side. Cook just missed it. He comes out to the 30, where he's hit, cut down by Schnellenberger. The ball is at the line of scrimmage. There was no loss on the play, and it's third down and six Tennessee on their 30. Kentucky leads 7-0. Meilinger is your deep man. Bob Hardy and Joe Platter playing halfbacks. Malone and Atkins are in behind the line, which has been 7, 8, and almost a 9 on the first down Tennessee play. Volunteers move out. Jerry Hyde is the wing back outside the right end. Timeout has been taken by Kentucky as the balls move up to the line of scrimmage. The clock has been stopped with 7 minutes and 28 seconds in the first quarter. And the Wildcats leading by 7 to nothing. <laughs> well, we arrived at the football field here today at 11 a.m. The tarpaulin completely covered stall field. Shortly before noon, however, the field was cleared. The tarp was rolled up on cylinders and is right now laying out in front of the temporary picket fence, which is in front of the temporary boxes. <laughs> the game here last year, as you may recall, started at 2 o'clock, or a year before last, the last time these two teams played in Lexington, and we ended up with the lights being turned on. So this year, the football game started at 1.30. 
and gave uh, a chance for the teams to go under sunlight, which it seems perhaps they're going to be able to do. And for the first time in several years, Kentucky and Tennessee are playing on what could certainly be considered an ideal football day. The temperature at 64, moving up slightly. The humidity only 36%. We have a breeze of about 12 to 16 miles an hour out of the south, which is growing crosswise across all fields. Tennessee has gone in punt formation. Dave Griffith, uh, or rather Jerry Wade, the tailback. Fake punt. Here's Wade caught and thrown back to the 25. Great play in there. Zampino, the right end, came lashing in there with Joe Cook, the right guard. And they're going to move it out from the Tennessee 25 upfield to the 27. A loss of only three on the play. Duke Cornute submarining got in there well, too, for the Wildcats. It's fourth down and nine for Tennessee. Meilinger has gone back to the Kentucky 31 in punt, for, in punt uh, receiving position. Jimmy Wade stands back in punt formation at the Tennessee 16. Gets the snap letter high. Zampino came crashing through. Couldn't get to him. Meilinger gets it on the 35. Hanging out left. Rotroff after him. Rotroff got him at the 35. Meilinger gets away and races up in front of the Kentucky bench. He was out of bounds at about the 40. Meilinger outran Rotroff, who got a good shot at him. Rotroff missed him back at about the 35, and Meilinger came on upfield to the 41. Nice six-yard run back there by Meilinger. The Wildcats take over first down and 10 from the Kentucky 41. Maryland has gone on top of Alabama 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Meilinger is a flanker right as Hardy mows in, takes, mows right, keeps, comes up to the 45, and crawls on out to about the 46. Meilinger only moved two or three steps from that flanker position. John Powell, Tennessee right guard, made the tackle on Hardy. Quarterback keeping that time, and he got about six yards. The pig skin is spotted on the 45, so give him four. Just a little bit above the 45. It's second down and six for the Wildcats. Powell and McCluskey in there at guards. As Meilinger's come out to the right now as a flanker, Tennessee's gone into a six-man line, almost a five. Quick hand off to Platt, comes out the midfield, goes to the Tennessee 49, and it's close to a first down. Little Joe from Kokomo, the Wildcats right halfback, was hit by Bill Barbish, the Tennessee linebacker, on the volunteer 49. It was second and six. Platt got six yards, and it's going to be just uh, about a foot shy at the Tennessee 49 of a first down. So it's third down and a foot to go. Timeout has been taken on the field by Kentucky. The board has gone out completely. The scoreboard is out. So apparently the... Uh, Old time piece here at Stahl Field has not been fixed as was hoped it had been. Dick McNabb, who's operating the electric clock, has moved out on the field to talk with the officials and uh, see what's going to be done about it. The officials conferring now to see what will be done. The clock is completely blacked out now. There are not even any lights on it burning. It's been fading fast, and uh, perhaps the shock of... Tennessee and down this Saturday afternoon has been all it needed to go all the way out. Here's some other late scores for you. At the end of the first quarter, George Washington leads Richmond 7-0. There is no score between Villanova and Syracuse at the end of the quarter, and no score between Virginia and North Carolina at the end of the quarter. As we said, Maryland is leading Alabama 14-0 at the end of the first quarter. At the half, Dartmouth leads Princeton 14-12, and Columbia leads Rutgers 14-13. Well, we're going to have to go at least through this first quarter of play without any further assistance from the scoreboard. Something like six minutes remain. Kentucky was ready to operate, moved out of the huddle, and the officials waved them back. Something is going to have to be worked out with the officials and the coaches <laughs> to see how the timing of this first quarter will be worked out. Ivy Robinson off the Tennessee bench and Coach Bear Bryant at the Kentucky bench and let's see what the decision is going to be. The electric clock operator now apparently is going to keep the remaining time on a stopwatch. Well, there's been one full week between football games, between Memphis State and the Tennessee game, and the clock is in worse shape week than it was last week. The ball is almost squarely in the center of the field at the Tennessee 49. It's an equal distance between the sidelines. It's a foot shy of the line to gain where it's third down for Kentucky. The officials now explaining to Bob Hardy in the Tennessee huddle what is being done about the timepiece. We have no changes in the Kentucky lineup, 
Everybody that started is still in there. Kentucky's ready to go, and the official starts the uh, timepiece. Backfield straight away, and the line split as Hardy moves in. Tennessee over shifting the line now to a 6-2. Hardy takes, keeps, moves down to the Tennessee 47-48 for his first down. That's the sixth first down Kentucky has reeled off here this afternoon. Hardy on a key play, coming out, angling just outside right tackle. Dan Sikanova, or rather Mike, Mac Franklin, who's in there at left uh, end, made the tackle for the volunteers as Hardy was able to go to the 47 for two yards. It's first down and 10. The ball is 18 yards out from the southern side of the field. The line is split in the backfield straight away. Tennessee in a six-man line. Hardy takes, gives to Pallone, and goes to the 45 and may have made the Tennessee 44. A gain of about three yards on the play. Hardy then seemed to be faking the belly play as he laid it to Pallone. He looked like he might take it back, but he didn't. And Pallone went to the 45 where he's tackled by Cloninger. It's second down and eight for the Wildcats. Here's Kentucky out of the huddle, moving to the line of scrimmage. Tennessee's gone back to the standard seven diamond. They shift out of it to a 6-2. Hardy takes, Moe's left, gives. Go to pass. Close to Mylinger at the 40. Down to the 35. Out of bounds at about the 32 or 3. Bob Cloninger and Bill Barbie got him out of bounds, but it's a first down. It looked like Hardy had given off then to Ralph Cologne, but he pulled it back and pitched to Mylinger in the left flat. Steve went down for Kentucky's seventh first down to the Tennessee 33. A pass gaining play of 12 yards. Kentucky leads 7 0. Jim Profit has come in replacing Al Zampino at right end. Kentucky's on a Tennessee. First down, 10 at the 33. Here's Meilinger, left halfback, flanking to the right. He's out about 10 yards. Tennessee overshifts the defense to catch him. Hardy takes, keeps, goes to the 35, driven back to the 34. Went to the 30, rather. Bill Barbish got in on him. And also John Powell, the right guard, hit him high and drove him back. They rule Hardy went to the 31 for a gain of two. Second down and eight for the Wildcats. Who took the kickoff on their 26, went to the Tennessee 15 where they fumbled. The Vols fumbled it back on their first scrimmage play, and Meilinger in three plays went the touchdown. Hardy converted. Here's Hardy ready to go now. Moe's right, keeping. Fakes the pitch back. Can't do it. Thrown for a loss. Back at about the 32 by Cloninger. Nice play by Tennessee's Bob Cloninger, who caught uh, Bob Hardy from the rear and... Packed him down to the 32. Third down and nine for the Wildcats, and this is the longest play they've had to run outside of a first and ten. We're in the first quarter of play here at Lexington. Kentucky leading 7-0. Open side of the field to the left. The backfield straight away now for the Wildcats as Hardy moves in for his third and nine play. Fakes a jump pass, gives to Pallone, goes inside the 30 to about the Tennessee 29. Charlie Coffey, the left guard, made the tackle. Time has been taken out by Tennessee. They roll Ralph Pallone, went just inside the 30, making about the 29 for three yards, and it's fourth down and six. Tennessee has called a timeout here in the first quarter of play, and Neil Lowry is taking the opportunity to come into the Kentucky lineup. Lowry has played guard most of the season. He's coming in at right guard this time, replacing Joe Cook. Lowry, L-O-W-E-R-Y, from Youngstown, Ohio, stands six feet, weighs 192, a 21-year-old junior. Kentucky back on the line of scrimmage at Tennessee 29. It's fourth down and six, and Kentucky's running with it. Hardy is back to pass, running to the left, being rushed. Pass downfield is complete to the 10, we believe. No good. They really dropped it. Looked very close, and Snellenberger cut in there along with Bradley Mills. Tennessee takes over on downs at its 29. Tom Tracy made a nice defensive maneuver, hitting Snellenberger as the pass got there. Bob Hardy is coming out. Dick Chateau is in to replace him. 20 year old sophomore from Springfield, Ohio, who's 6'1, weighs 190. Bradley Mills has replaced Steve Meilinger. Meilinger is out. Mills, a 19 year old sophomore from Lynch, Kentucky. Tennessee, single wing right, snapping there to the fullback. Tracy keeps, goes up to the 30, is hit, thrown back to about the 28. By the right side of the Kentucky line, led by Neil Lowry and Pete Kirk, the right tackle. Also, right in, Jim Profit was in on the play. There was no gain by Tennessee, as they have Tom Tracy at fullback, Jimmy Wade at tailback, Bill Barbish at blocking back, and Gary Hyde is the wingback. Tennessee wingback plays just outside right in, which indicates Tennessee strong to the right. They tighten up on the set signal. Jimmy Wade, the tailback. Takes a step forward, gets the snap, moving right, 
He's caught back on the 26 on a beautiful play by Pete Kirk, the right tackle. who came through and got him from the rear. Beautiful play by Kirk. Back in the Tennessee 25. And the Kentucky forward wall has looked tremendous. Gives some credit there to Ray Correll, too. Correll just now getting up. The ball is back in the 26. His wave was dumped for a three-yard loss. It's third down and 13 for the Volunteers. Kentucky 7, Tennessee nothing. We're in the first quarter. The clock at Stallfield is broken completely now. We have no idea of how much time remains. It's just a guess on our part. Bradley Mills playing safety for the Wildcats. Dick Chateau and Joe Platt playing the halfbacks. Tennessee's in punt formation with Wade back in the 15. They ran off it a moment ago. They're running off at this time, and they may have made it back to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. As Ray Carell clogged the center of the line. Twice, Tennessee has run off punt formation. Jerry Hyde, the wingback, trying it. He didn't make it to the line of scrimmage, was cut down at the 25 by Terrell, where it's now fourth down and 14 for the balls. Bradley Mills will be the deep man now to handle his punt by Jimmy Wade. Wade kicked to Meilinger a moment ago at the 35, and Steve ran it back six yards. Jimmy Wade's back to the Tennessee 15 once again in punt formation. The snap back there beautifully. He gets his kick. Away is partially blocked. High into the air to the Tennessee 40. It hits, kicks back downfield. Out of bounds in the 39. That was a 14-yard kick by Jimmy Wade. <laughs> Wade kicked from his 25, upfield of the 39, where the Wildcats take over. And Kentucky relinquished the ball on the 29, gets it back now on the 39, first down and 10. Duke Cranute and Tommy Atkins have come out of the Kentucky lineup. Leo Strange from Louisville Manual has come in at center. Howie Schnellenberger is coming out. Arvin Biven is now in. Bradley Mills is coming out. Kirby Hunt is now in at quarterback. He's the Mayfield senior. 6'1", weighs 165. Hunt crew for a touchdown pass that tied the balls last year in Knoxville. He's ready to go. Mosan is backfield straight away. Chateau at left half goes in motion. The handoff is to Tom Fillion, who's in there at fullback, and Fillion goes to about the Tennessee 36 or 37. Stopped by left tackle Bob Fisher. Dick Mitchell is at the other halfback. Tom Fillion, a 5'10 senior from Owensboro. Dick Mitchell, a 5'8 junior, is from Somerset. The ball is three yards downfield. We're at second down and seven for the Wildcats in the Tennessee 36, almost near the middle of the field. Mitchell is at right, Chateau at left, and Fillion at fullback. As Hunt, the quarterback, hands off to Mitchell. He goes through to the 25, the 35, rather down to the 30, and on down to the Tennessee 25. His knee was on the ground at the 26. Ten-yard run by little Dick Mitchell as Jerry Hyde finally got him, and that's Kentucky's eighth first down here in the first quarter with a 7 nothing lead. First down and ten on the Tennessee 26, about 21 or two yards out from across the way. That's the northern side of the field, open side to the right. Hunt mows in. Chateau, the left halfback, is up very close to the line this time. Hunt gives again to Mitchell, goes inside the 25 to about the 24. Dick Mitchell was taught by Mac Franklin, Tennessee's left end and captain. <laughs> Two-yard gain by Mitchell, puts it up to Hunt, second down and eight. He has the Wildcats an open huddle back in the 32 and three, calling the second and eight play. Wildcats are up, the backfield straight away with the line split. Tennessee's in a 6 2 one over shifted slightly to the right. Handoff is to Fillion, dives into the center of the Tennessee line. The hole was not there, the entire center. Bob Fisher, Charlie Coffey, Bob Cloninger, John Powell, Darius McCord, the right tackle, all in there to hold. Down to the 22, as Fillion got two more yards. It's now third down and six. Kentucky ran a fourth down play just a moment ago from the 29. So they may, be, may not be punting on next down if they don't get six this time. Hot Mosan, Tennessee in a six-man line. Overshifted slightly to the right. Herbie hunts back to pass, runs back to the 30, comes down to the 25, looks for his man. He can't find him. He's going to be caught. Now he throws right to Tennessee on the 15-yard line. He dropped it, though. And Hunt almost gave it away then to Darius McCord, the right tackle. Hunt had all afternoon to throw the ball, couldn't find anybody. Bill Barbage came through there and cracked him back about the 28. And Hunt just wily threw the ball right almost into the hands of McCord. McCord dropped it, though, on the 15. So now it's fourth down and six. Timeout taken to the Wildcats. Getting a substitute in. It looks like Dick Maloney is coming into the Kentucky backfield, perhaps replacing Fillion. 
Nope, it's Hunt, the quarterback, going out, and we'll probably see Dick Chateau take over the reins now. As Dick Maloney will call the signal, which he apparently is bringing in from the Kentucky bench. Not much time remaining here in the first quarter. Kentucky's on the Tennessee 22. It's fourth down and six. This is last try. They're in punt formation with Dick Maloney back. Will they be kicking? Nope, Mitchell's back. He dropped the ball. Picked it up. He's caught back in the 31. And Tennessee again is able to stop the Wildcats inside the 30. As Roger Rothrow came cracking through and got Dick Mitchell, who dropped the snap from center. Tennessee takes over on its 31. So the Wildcats caught Tennessee with a short 14-yard kick and were unable to take advantage of it. They lead 7-0. Here's the end of the first quarter. Tennessee trailing the Wildcats by a score of 7-0. Tennessee going into the second quarter now, trailing 7-0 as possession. And it's 31. First down and 10. Kentucky has dominated this first quarter of play. The end of the first quarter, Auburn leads Clemson 12 0. At the half, Michigan leads Ohio State 13 0. At the quarter, South Carolina leads Warford 14 0. And at the quarter, West Virginia leads North Carolina State 7 0. Tennessee is going to throw the single wing to the right with the open side of the field to the left. Kentucky has gone into a seven man line, almost an eight, backing out to a six now. Swanger, who's back in there at fullback, takes, keeps on a fake to Bringle and comes out to about the 33 where Leo Strange made the tackle. A gain of maybe two yards on the play. Schwanger is in at fullback and Bringle is now in at tailback replacing Jimmy Wade. <coughs> He's up to the 33, second down and eight for Tennessee. Gary Hyde still in at wing back. Single wing right off the balance line. Kentucky in the six-man line. Here's a quick kick by Tennessee. Bringle backs up, kicks it to Dick Mitchell down on the Kentucky 30. Mitchell goes back and gets it at the 20. Comes out to the 25, the 30, 31, 2, and may have made the 33. Nice play, Dick Mitchell, who really hustled back to get to the 20. Ray Chapman, who's in there replacing Cloninger at Tennessee center, got him down on the 32. No, Tennessee quick kicking to get Kentucky out of its territory. And Kentucky is called timeout. They'll be in possession at their 32 first down and 10 with a 7 0 lead when we go back to play. Bob Hardy gets a nice hand as he comes in off the Kentucky bench. At the half, Boston leads Temple 7 0. Nick Chateau coming out. Michigan State leads Marquette 14 9 at the half. Harvard leading Yale 6 0 at the half. Penn State leading Pittsburgh 10 0 at the half. Another halftime score Holy Cross 20, Fordham nothing. The end of the quarter, Furman 7, Wake Forest 6. Kentucky is dominating the football game so far. They took the opening kickoff in their 26 and fumbled at the Tennessee 15 to relinquish possession for the first time. But Jimmy Wade fumbled on the Tennessee's first play. Schnellenberger recovered. Meilinger carried the ball three straight times and scored. Hardy converted. And that's the picture right now. Kentucky 7, Tennessee nothing. We're just going into the second quarter. This is the first Kentucky play of the second quarter. Dick Mitchell is coming out to the left as a flanker, Fillion, in at fullback. Bradley Mills at left handback. Bob Hardy at quarterback. Belly play, pitches out to Mills. Switched up to the 35 and on out to the 36. He was caught in there by Jerry Hyde. Bradley Mills came up field about four yards to the 36. We're at his second down and six for the Wildcats. Dan Sikanovich is now at left end for Tennessee. He made the tackle there with Jerry Hyde. Sikanovich is 6'3", weighs 190. As Mac Franklin, the captain, is out. Bob Hardy ready to go. His backfield straight away. Takes, fakes, gives in there to fall back Tom Fillion. Fillion blasts away to about the Kentucky 39. Maybe two or three yard gain there. See where the ball is spotted down. Fillion running out of fullback. Went up to the Wildcat 39 for a gain of three. Third down and three now for the Wildcats. And again it was Sikinovich, the left end that made the tackle for Tennessee. Bill Barbich, who has done a great job defensively for Tennessee, is not in there at the moment. Kentucky ready to operate. Third and three play. Hardy takes, hands off Fillion, jumps the line, comes out to the 30. To the 44, it's a first down. 
Tom Fillion did a nice job on that one. Jumped over the Tennessee line. Nobody can claim a tackle on that one. It's definitely right. As Fillion leaped the line to get Kentucky's ninth first down. Upfield on the 44. This is much the way Florida did against Tennessee last week. Pushed them all over the field, but couldn't quite beat them. Hardy takes gives right halfback, driving away as Dick Mitchell. Nice run by Dick Mitchell and very nice play by the right side of the Kentucky line. Joe Cook, Bill Wheeler, Jim Profit who opened the way for Mitchell to go in to near midfield. He's down after about a six-yard gain at midfield by Bobby Scott, the right guard, and Hal Hubbard, who's now in it blocking back to Tennessee from Lynchburg, Virginia, teammate of Jimmy Wade. Second down and four for the Wildcats right at midfield, open field to their left, the back straight away. Hardy takes, gives to Fillion, who jumps the line again and goes into Tennessee territory, down to about the ball 49. Tom Fillion once again was leaping over the line on that second down and four play. Third down coming up now. The ball is at the Tennessee 49, about three yards shy of the line to gain. Tom Hensley at left tackle and Ray Chapman at center made the tackle for Tennessee. Third and three play from the Tennessee 49. The Dougie backfield straight away against the six-man line. Hardy takes, fakes, gives off. Running with the ball is Dick Mitchell, the right half back. He got it down to the 45. Beautiful play by Dick Mitchell. Jim Demo, the left guard, and Chapman made the tackle. That's 10 first downs for Kentucky. They're now in the Tennessee 45, having moved from their own 32. The clock has just come on. We'd rather not believe it here for a few minutes. Here's Hardy handing off, quick opener to Mills. Laddles back to Fillion at the 30, 35, down to the 25, down to the 20, the 15. He's cut down on the 12. Tom Fillion almost went on the way that time. A beautiful lateral by Bradley Mills. Tennessee may have an injury on the play. Beautiful play by Bobby Scott, who ran Fillion down from the back. Fillion raced downfield from the 35 to the Tennessee 12. The Wildcats going to a huddle now as Tennessee's called timeout, trading 7 0. Some of the first stringers are coming back in for the balls. John Powell coming in at right guard. Here's McCluskey coming back in at left guard. Jimmy Wade is staying out of there at tailback. Injured on the play was Bobby Scott, who made the tackle on Tom Fillion. Well, Tennessee's in trouble. They trailed 7 0. And Kentucky had a third and three play there, which they got the yardage for the first down to the Tennessee 45. And on first down and 10, handoff from Bob Hardy to Bradley Mills, who lateral to Fillion. And the play went 33 yards to the Tennessee 12. And the Wildcats are threatening. This is the way Kentucky lines up. Dude Hennessy, a Paris Jr. is in there at left end. Arvin Bevan left tackle. Neil Lowry left guard. Strange is at center. Joe Cook, Bill Wheeler, Jim Profit. On the right side of the Wildcat line, Bob Hardy's at quarterback, Nick Mitchell at left half, Bradley Mills at right, and Tom Fillion's at fullback. As most of the first string Kentucky backfield is getting a rest right now, and a good many of the up front regulars are getting a rest, namely Ray Carell. <laughs> no change in the Kentucky lineup as they move up to the Tennessee 12. It's first down and 10. Hardy's back to pass, and he ends on the profit. He dropped it. Beautiful pass for Bob Hardy, right to Jim Prophet, who dropped it. The ball hit him right at the belt buckle, and, Bob, and Jim Prophet let it get away from him. Prophet would have had his second touchdown against Tennessee as he scored the tying touchdown last year. Swanger was back there with him, but Swanger was behind Prophet, and Hardy threw a strike. It's second down and 10 now from the Tennessee 12. Hardy moves in, the backfield straight away in the line split. Hardy moves to the left, gives off. Here's Bradley Mills going to the Tennessee Five on a beautiful seven-yard run right off his left tackle. And a lot of credit there to Arvin Bevan as they wedged on him. Dude Hennessy made a beautiful block and opening the way for Mills down to the Tennessee Five. Cloninger and Jerry Hyde made the tackle. It's third down and set, a third down and three for the Wildcats on the Tennessee Five. Two big downs coming up. Bob Hardy moves in, takes, keeps going right, looks for a receiver, can't find him, pitches back, Bradley Mills outside, goes all the way for the touchdown. Oh, that was a tremendous play by Bob Hardy. 
who kept that ball, looked like he was going to pass and looked like he was going to put it away and try to make it himself outside tackle. And about that time, Bradley Mills, the trailer, put on the steam. Hardy pitched back to him, and that's exactly the way Kentucky scored last week against Memphis State. Bradley Mills has just scored his first touchdown against Tennessee. Matter of fact, that's the first time Bradley Mills has scored in his collegiate career. He's just given Kentucky a 13-0 lead. Bob Hardy and Dude Hennessy are going to try and team up for the second extra point. Hennessy will hold. Hardy will kick from about the nine. Hennessy over, waiting for the snap. There it is, the placement. Hardy boots. It's blocked. No good. And the score remains 13 to nothing. Let's pick up the Kentucky band across the lane. Well, Kentucky has gone into a two touchdown lead over Tennessee, 13 to nothing. And this is the first time since 1935 that that's happened. The Wildcats will be kicking off now for the second time in the football game. Steve Meilinger is back in at left halfback. There were three reserves in the backfield at that time went downfield for that touchdown. That touchdown drive, incidentally, was 68 yards. <coughs> Tennessee quick kick to the Wildcats. Dick Mitchell moved it from the 20 back to the 32. Kentucky took over and went straight downfield, including a 33-yard run by Bradley Mills, who lateral to Tom Fillion, who went to the Tennessee 12. Kentucky scored on a third down and three play from the five. Bradley Mills went seven yards after an incompleted pass in the end zone to Profit. On second down, Mills went seven yards to the five. And on third down and three, Mills went five yards to the pay dirt. Meilinger is ready to kick off now from the flat on the ground. He lifts it up over the restraining line to the 25, down to the 20 where Swanger gets it, out to the 25, to the 30, into the 35, the 40, almost got into the open at the 45, and he's cut down from the rear. Steve Meilinger made the tackle for the Wildcats. Joe Cook was trying to get in there when he was cut out of the play. Meilinger had help from Bradley Mills in making the tackle at the Tennessee 45. First down and 10 for the Volunteers on their 45. Open side of the field to the left. Single wing right off the balance line. Kentucky is now in an almost an eight-man line. The snap is back to the tailback. Jimmy Wade angles off the strong side, comes out to the 47. He's hit. But very hard. Joe Cook was in there on the play for the Wildcats, and Tommy Atkins, the linebacker. Just now getting off the ground is Duke Renute. Up on the Volunteer 47, it was a gain of two on the play. Second down and eight for the balls. Tennessee doesn't own a first down yet. Or in the second quarter as Kentucky leads 13-0. The clock here at Stallfield broke up midway of the first quarter, and we're unable to tell you how much time remains. Single wing right for the balls. Snap back to the full back, hands off to Jimmy Wade, moving out to the left side. Knutes blocked out of the play. Wade's running. Atkins got him over on the 45. A beautiful play. Tommy Atkins. Racing right in there with Atkins was Al Zampino, the right end. And Joe Cook, the little right guard, did a good job in getting in there and turning Wade wide. There was a loss of a yard on that play, although it was a lot of running by Wade. The snap was to Swanger, the fullback, who handed off to his tailback, Wade, the deep man. Tennessee third down and nine. Open side of the field now to the right of the Volunteers. There are nine minutes in the first half. Tennessee lines up, single wing right, which is the open side of the field for them. Kentucky's in another eight-man line. There's the snap, flag on the play. Wade is thrown down by Terrell back in the 34-yard line. But we believe Kentucky was offside. Ray Correll got Wade back at the 35. Beautiful play by Kentucky's All-American left guard, but they're nullifying it. We believe Kentucky was offside. That's the first time a flag has been down this afternoon. Tennessee definitely is going to take that penalty. Make it third down and four on the Kentucky 49. Well, that was a damaging penalty to Kentucky because Tennessee would have to have kicked back in its 35 as they lost that time 11 yards. 
with charging Ray Terrell. Now Tennessee's on Kentucky's 49 for the first time this afternoon. Tennessee's in Kentucky territory, third down and four. It's still a great big play for the Vols. They need their first first down to hold on to the ball. The snap back to Wade, running right. He's going to pass. Looks for his man open. Throws a long one way downfield. It may go. No, dropped on the 10-yard line. Roger Rothkopf was open and dropped it at the 10. He was in behind Meilinger, who tried to get up for it. It was over his head, and Rothkopf dropped it. So now it's fourth down, Tennessee, on the Kentucky 49. Tennessee huddles up now for a fourth down and four play. <laughs> for the first time, they're in Kentucky territory. Jimmy Wade's the deep man at the 40. Meilinger back to the Kentucky 10 in safety. Wade calling signals from the deep. Offsides. Charging in there was Ray Carell. He contacted Darius McCord, the wide man for Tennessee. If that's Kentucky's offsides, it's Tennessee's ball first down. Kentucky was offsides. And they're giving it to Tennessee, first down and 10. Down on the 44-yard line. Two straight offsides penalties against the Wildcats. Have given Tennessee its first first down of the afternoon. We're midway the second quarter. Kentucky leads Tennessee 13 to nothing. Meilinger is back deep for the Wildcats. Bradley Mills at right halfback and Bob Hardy at left halfback. And Kentucky is almost the rest of them on the line. Just about an eight-man line. It's 6-2 right now. Halone goes up on the line. And uh, Atkins moves up on the line. Now Cook drops back on the snap. Schwanger, the fullback up the middle, goes down to the 41, is hit by Atkins and thrown back along with help from Joe Cook to about the 43. Nice play by Cook. And Atkins came through splendidly with Duke Cernu. Second down play coming out for the Volunteers. They're on the Kentucky 42 after a two-yard gain. Second down and eight. A lot of hard hitting out on that football field this afternoon. Tennessee, ball in equal distance between the sidelines. Second down and eight on the Kentucky 42. Single wing is right. Snapping there to Wade, the tailback. He's racing out to the right. Snellenberger blocked out of it. Wade's caught though at the 40. Nice play by Tommy Atkins as he got help from Hardy, Snellenberger, and Joe Cook. Also, Duke Newton on the play. Wade was down on the 40 for a two-yard gain. Third down and six for Tennessee. The temperature up in the mid-60s this afternoon. There's not a cloud in sight here at Lexington. Beautiful day. Fans across the way in the Northern Stadium in their shirt sleeves. About 38,000 on hand. Tennessee, single wing right. Open side of the field off the weak side. The snap to Schwanger to uh, Wade. Back to pass. He's caught by Schellenberger and down on the 44. Pete Kirk also in on the play. Kirk got him around the knees and Schellenberger knocked him off balance at the 44. Loss of four yards. Fourth down and 10, Tennessee. Now, Tennessee was unable to do anything with the Kentucky offsides twice on one series of downs. <laughs> Roger Rothroff was all the way in the end zone that time. Apparently, Wade was supposed to get a pass away. Now he's back in punt formation. To the Tennessee 45, Meilinger is the safety man. Drifts back to the Kentucky 15. Wade stands poised. Long count. High snap. Wade gets it. His kick gets away. A high short one. Meilinger doesn't handle it. Goes down to the 15. The 10, a beautiful kick to the 7, to the 6, and rolls dead. A beautiful kick by Jimmy Wade to the Kentucky 6-yard line. Tennessee's got a man out on the 24. There was a tremendous block in there by Bob Hardy that time. And John Powell, Tennessee's right guard, is hurt. Kentucky now has it first and ten on its own six-yard line. This is the deepest the Wildcats have been this afternoon. <coughs> Powell is up on his feet, okay, staying in the ball game as Tennessee Mickey trainer Mickey O'Brien comes off the field. Now checking in for the Volunteers is Captain Max Franklin at left end. Dan Sikanovich is coming out. Kentucky ready to go first and ten from its own six. Mills at right halfback. Ralph Pallone is at fullback now and Meilinger at left halfback. Tennessee is penalized five yards for a delay of the game. So the Wildcats have it first down and five from the 11. 
That's the second, uh, first penalty against Tennessee, only the third one of the ball game. Kentucky ready to go. Hardy takes. Moe's right. Gives off. Pallone sweeping to the right. Gets up to the line of scrimmage. That's all he can get. Maybe he made the 12 for a one-yard game. There's McCord. The right tackle was in to catch him. Let's see where they got Ralph Pallone down. He's down on a 12. One-yard gain. It's second down and four. At the quarter, Illinois needs Northwestern six to nothing. Here's Kentucky. Open side of the field to the left. Backfield straight away. Hardy takes. Gives into Pallone. Drives out to the 15. The big fallback. Blasting away up the middle. Comes to the 15 for a gain of three on the play. Third down and one. Tackle made by Schwanger, Hubbard, Boninger, Coffey. All of them in on the play. The ball is right at the hash mark on the Kentucky 15. About 18 yards out from the northern side of the field. Third down and one play coming up. Hardy Mosen takes, keeps right, fakes the pitch back, keeps, comes out for the first down to about the 17. Bob Hardy made it. Mac Franklin made the tackle. That's Kentucky's 12th first down in this first half of play. And Kentucky leads 13-0. The ball is on the Kentucky 17. First down and 10. <laughs> Kentucky's moved up field. 11 yards. Thanks to a five-yard Tennessee offside delay of the game penalty. Hardy gives. Meilinger pitches back to Mills. He's caught behind the line of scrimmage. Back in the 17. He gets back up to the line. Jerry Hyde and Mac Franklin. Roger Rottrop were all in there. No gain. Second down and ten. Tennessee has called timeout. Check that. The officials have called timeout as we have four minutes in the first half of play. Four minutes. So let's us pause 20 seconds for station identification. This is the Standard Oil Sports Network. You're listening to WVLK, Lexington. Back to action now. <laughs> Wildcats second and ten on their 17. Hardy takes, keeps moving right. Comes out to the 20. But he's caught from around the neck by Bob Cloninger. Thrown to the ground at the Kentucky 20. Where it's third down and seven now for the Wildcats. We're inside the final four minutes. Ermel Allen, over in front of the Kentucky bench, just signaled the kick. Let's see if we interpreted that signal correctly. Kentucky's in the tee and shift out the punt formation. Meilinger going deep. Goes back to the seven. Gets the snap. Drops it. Picks it up. And miraculously gets it away. Fair catch up on the 45. Correll let Jimmy Wade make it and back away from him. Meilinger did a great job in getting that kick away as he juggled it. Tennessee gets the ball back on its 45, first and 10. Kentucky leading 13 to nothing. <laughs> Nick Shafto now in the Kentucky lineup. And Bob Hardy's out. Joe Platt has come in. Hardy and Platt playing halfbacks. Meilinger's the deep man. Here's Tennessee up to the line of scrimmage. They're 45, first and 10. Single wing right. Snap back to Jimmy Wade, racing to the right, going to pass. Fires a screen pass, incomplete up to Jerry Hyde, the wing back at the 50. Chateau was right in there behind him. Tommy Atkins out in this side zone. Tennessee flooded the right side zone. Pass intended for Hyde. The wing back couldn't hold on to it. Wade got it to him nicely. Kentucky has scored in each of the quarters, leading 13 to nothing. We're within about three minutes of halftime. Tennessee, single wing right. Kentucky is in an eight-man line. Three deep men. Now shifting out to a seven. Wade takes. Screen pass. No good at the 41. Barbish. Or check that Hubbard. The blocking back. Got one hand on it at the 40, but couldn't hold on to it. Three short passes incomplete. One to Hyde, the wing back. One to Hal Hubbard, the blocking back. Off the bench, Sikanovich. Coming in at left end to replace Franklin. Franklin races off the short side of the field in front of the Kentucky bench to get out of there before another delay of the game penalty. 
Tennessee breaks huddle. Kentucky has dominated play so far with a 13 0 lead. There are two minutes in the first half now. Tennessee, third and 10 on its 45, single wing right. Seven man, Kentucky line, seven diamond. Wade takes back to pass. Cook, Corral rush in there. They got him back on the 40. He fumbles. Kentucky got it up on the 40. No good. Dead ball. Great play by Ray Corral. Joe Cook also in there. Loss of five on the play. Fourth down and 15. Halftime score, Iowa and Notre Dame, 7-7 at the quarter. Minnesota leading Wisconsin, 7-0 at the quarter. Duke leading Georgia Tech, 3-0. Jimmy Wade back to the 30, punt formation. Bradley Mills is the beat man at the Kentucky 30. Wade gets the snap of beauty. He's right. He got his kick away, though. Bradley Mills watches it go out of bounds across the way at the Kentucky 32. The Wildcats gained 12 yards on that exchange of kicks. <laughs> Dick Chateau coming out. Herbie Hunt in at quarterback. At a half, Villanova 7, Syracuse nothing. Auburn 26, Clemson 6. Washington and Lee 7, William and Mary nothing. Wildcats on its 32, first and 10. 13 nothing lead. Backfield straight away. Platt at right. Meilinger left. Pallone full. Herbie Hunt, quarterbacking, calling signals against six-man line. Hands off to Bradley Mills, the left halfback. Comes out to the 35 and on up to about the 39. Great run by the Lynch sophomore. Cloninger and McCord of Tennessee made the tackle. Flag down on the play. Backfield in motion. There's another five-yard penalty, the third of the afternoon, coming out against Kentucky. No 15-yard penalty so far. He lies back to the 27. First down and 15 for Kentucky. At a half, North Carolina leading Virginia 7 0. West Virginia leading North Carolina State 34 0. And at the end of the quarter, Purdue leads Indiana 7 0. Kentucky first and 15 on its 27. Out of the huddle, Bradley Mills at left half. Meilinger is out of there. Hunt calling, drops. Tennessee's got it on the 25. Herbie Hunt dropped the ball on the snap from center. And Tennessee's Tom Hensley, the left tackle, fell on it quickly. Kentucky has called timeout. The Tennessee is going to get it here for some fireworks in the closing minute and a half. They have it down on the Kentucky 25 first down and 10. And this is the farthest downfield the Volunteers have been this afternoon. Sun shining brilliantly here and uh, almost a negligible breeze. Dick Maloney coming in and Hunt's coming out. The shadow of the press box has extended from the 20 yard lines halfway across the field. Both teams playing in the sunshine right now, though. The kickoff time was moved up a half hour since two years ago. At this football game, they had to turn the lights on for the fourth quarter of play. Incidentally, senior blocking back Hal Hubbard, who came in there a moment ago, is the older brother of a freshman guard named Bill Hubbard, who's for the balls this afternoon. Both the boys, along with tailback Jimmy Wade, played high school ball at Glass High in Lynchburg, Virginia. Tennessee in the center of the field at the Kentucky 25, moved to the line of scrimmage. Single wing right. Kentucky has loosened up the defenses a little bit. They're in a seven... One, seven diamond, over shifted to the left. A wing back around, Hyde going to the left. He doesn't get his blocking, comes to the line of scrimmage, and is thrown back to the 27. Joe Cook had a host of Wildcats in there who weren't fooled by that wing back around the weak side. Second down play coming out. The clock here at Stall Field is in awful bad shape. Not even running. Back to the 26, and second down and 11 for the balls. Time, a big element now. Tennessee will be going for the long yardage. Single wing right. That's the open side. Kentucky in a six man line. Wade gets the ball, races back, has protection, throws to the end zone, way over everybody's head. Back at the goal line. Rotcroft leaped in the air, but he couldn't get to it. Bradley Mills was back there with him along with Dick Maloney. Dick Maloney is a Dixie Heights boy, 19 year old sophomore. Stands 5'11. Tennessee third down on the Kentucky 26, 11 to go. Wildcats leading 13 to nothing. 
Touchdowns by Meilinger and Bradley Mills. One extra point. The first attempt by Bob Hardy. He missed on the second as it was blocked. Tennessee's third down and 11 play now from the Kentucky 26. They tighten up on the set signal. Single wing right. Kentucky in a six-man line. Almost a five. Way back to pass. Throws in. Almost intercepted by Maloney. Down in the Kentucky 18. Gary Hyde was the man for whom it was pitched over his head with Atkins in front. Maloney in back almost got it. The balls have another crack at it. Fourth down and 11 from the Kentucky 26. A wing back around and two passes. A deep one and a flat pass incomplete. Rod Trump out. Ed Cantrell in it right in for the balls. Jam packed stadium here in Lexington this afternoon, as it always is for Tennessee. Single wing right for Tennessee, fourth down play, 11 yards to go from the Kentucky 26. Snap back to Wade, he's going to pass, he's hit by Correll, who slides off of him. The pass lobbed down to the five, it's completed, and he's down at about the four. Pass caught by Jerry Hyde, the wing back, and Tennessee got, gets its first down, and they may have punched themselves right back into this ball game. Bradley Mills made the tackle. Tennessee's got a first down and goal to go on the Kentucky four. We wish we could tell you how much time remains. Tennessee on the Kentucky four, first and goal to go now. Single wing right. Jimmy Wade gets it. Running right. He's going to throw for the touchdown. Nope, he's going to run. He made it. Standing up. Tennessee made that one look awful easy. After they got a fourth down and 11 pass for a first down on the four, Jimmy Wade kept threatening the pass, kept angling out wide to the right. And now it's 13 to 6, and Tennessee's right back in the football game. Bob Bringle coming in, along with uh, Terry Sweeney, a wing back. Swanger and Wade coming out. Sweeney, due in there, didn't make it. The coaches yelled for him to have a seat. Tennessee trying for the extra point now, and it's a very big one. Pat Shires is in to try for the extra point. Here's the snap. Shires kicks. It's good. 13 to 7. No good. Wait a minute. No, nope, that's the end of the half, apparently. The kick was good, and Tennessee apparently scored just as the half ended. We are unable to see a clock up here, and we can't tell you how much time remains. Tennessee on that touchdown drive went only 25 yards as they recovered a Kentucky fumble. Herbie Hunt fumble. Tennessee recovered and uh, went 25 yards, although they lost one yard on their first three plays. They threw a fourth down 11 pass as Wade hit high to the Kentucky four, and then Wade went over for the touchdown on the first down and goal-to-go play. And there apparently were just seconds to go when Wade went over. So now before the halftime ceremonies, here's the way the scoring went. In the first quarter, nine minutes and 11 seconds to go when Steve Meilinger went over from three plays out on the 17. Meilinger went from the last play, was two yards out. Hardy's kick was good and Kentucky led 7 nothing, which was the way it stood at the end of the first quarter. Then Kentucky reeled off another touchdown in the second quarter. Bradley Mills lateraling to Tom Fillion, which went 33 yards to the Tennessee 12. Bradley Mills went to the 5 after Jim Prophet dropped a pass in the end zone from Bob Hardy. And uh, then Mills went over from 5 yards out, standing up for the touchdown. Hardy missed the extra point, and it was 13 to nothing. With just seconds to go, about 2 or 3 seconds, Jimmy Wade went over from 5 yards out. After Tennessee recovered a Kentucky fumble on the 25, Pat Shires kicked the extra point, and that's the halftime picture. Kentucky 13, Tennessee 7. Now for halftime, here is Ted Brazard. Thank you, sir. Well, we're mighty glad you made it, Mr. Sullivan. After a very furious, fast, exciting first quarter there, I think uh, Claude had just about as little left as some of the lads, or maybe less than some of the boys who were playing football. That Kentucky marching 100s on the field right now. You know, all day, all morning around here, people have been talking about Tennessee, Tennessee, and uh, some of those who uh, thought for this once here for a long time, Kentucky might have a chance of winning this ball game, 
have been saying that Tennessee is a second half ball team. Tennessee is a second half, a third quarter, an every quarter ball game, anytime or anywhere they play. Tennessee is a last minute, a last second ball club. They keep playing all the time. As you've gathered from Claude's description, Kentucky has dominated the first half of play. I don't think anybody feared the outcome of this on the basis of team comparison here today, Kentucky against Tennessee. The one thing that Kentucky fans have been afraid of is dropping a ball, a fumble, losing it. They did that early in the game, recovered, however, when Tennessee fumbled and gave it right back to them. And a moment ago, when Herbie Hunt dropped one, that set up the play that with just a very few seconds remaining permitted Tennessee to score. We've got a whale of a deal on our hands here for another 30 minutes of ball playing this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. With a jam-packed stadium, more than 38,000 customers, we'd say, on hand here this afternoon on a beautiful day. What has been up until now a most beautiful day for Kentucky fans, too. And a contingent of several thousand Tennessee fans from down around Knoxville Way and other points in Tennessee and throughout the nation to see this big one. The Tennessee fans have been comparatively quiet throughout the first half. They haven't had much of anything to do any cheering about, as Kentucky has been the better of the two teams through the first two quarters. One drop that was costly. That's the one thing that they were afraid of, and it finally happened. Tennessee, as you know, a very cautious team. Even trailing 13 to nothing, they'll kick on third down. They'll do a lot of things that a lot of teams don't do. But with a fine record the volunteers have, apparently it pays off the kind of ball they play. Kentucky has a team fine, very determined. I don't believe there's any amount of, uh, well, fear is not the word, but any question that Kentucky feels they can beat the Tennessee Volunteers this year. Always before, as you've heard, the orange jerseys show up on the field, and right away they have an edge over the Kentucky Wildcats. That hasn't been true today, and regardless of the outcome of this affair here this afternoon, that still isn't true. Kentucky may make mistakes to lose a ball game. They may go on, play better ball, and win it. But whatever happens, nobody's afraid of anybody on Stahl Field this afternoon. They are fighting it out in a very beautiful job, much to the delight of these thousands of fans who are on hand. Let's listen to the Marching 100. Ladies and gentlemen, it's for Don and Donna Wilson, dad and daughter, baton twirling team. Now, let's take a time out here for station identification. This is the Standard Oil Sports Network. You're listening to WVLK Lexington. And we're ready to go now with the second half. Kentucky leading 13 to 7. 
Tennessee out on the field and ready to go. <laughs> Kentucky now breaking huddle. Moving out. And the second half about ready to get underway. Kentucky will kick off to Tennessee to start the second half. Jimmy Wade, Jerry Hyde, Ted Schwanger will be the deep men. Kentucky has kicked off twice to Tennessee. And neither kick has been a deep one. No kick deeper than the 20. At the end of the quarter, Baylor leads SMU 13 to nothing. At the end of the third quarter, Holy Cross leads Fordham 20 to nothing. At the half, Illinois leads Northwestern 18 to nothing. At the quarter, Arkansas and LSU are 6 to 6. At the quarter, no score between TCU and Rice, nor Missouri and Kansas. At the half, Furman leads Wake Forest 14 to 6. At the half, Georgia Tech leads Duke 6 to 3. Quarter, Oklahoma leads Nebraska two to nothing. The end of the quarter, that is. The end of the quarter, no score between Georgia and Mississippi Southern. Here's the second half. Meilinger kicks it down to the Tennessee 14. Fumble picked up by Stranger. After the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, 36, 37. Before he is finally cut down by Joe Platt. Dude Hennessy, or rather Joe Platt, in on that play for the Wildcats. And now we're into the second half of play. Out on the Tennessee 33, 38. First down and 10 for the balls. They trail 13 to 7. Single wing right. Tennessee scoring in the closing seconds of the half. Snap back to Wade. Races off a big hole to the right side to the 40 41, where he's caught on a great tackle by Tommy Atkins. Also went on to play Schnellenberger. He caught him right around the ankles. Caught him upfield on the 41, a gain of three. Second down and seven, Tennessee. Kentucky scored in each of the first two quarters. Tennessee scored in just a closing seconds of play. Second down and seven on their own, 41. Open side of the field to the left, which is weak. Snap goes back to Schwanger. He spins, goes up the middle, comes out to about the 45. Ball back Ted Schwanger, blasting right into the center of the Kentucky line, caught by Duke Cornute. Four-yard gain, third down and three. Big play coming out for the balls. Thirteen and a half minutes in the third quarter. Just in through the second half. Here at Stall Field, brilliant sunshiny day, not a cloud in the sky. Tennessee, balance line, single wing right. Kentucky has the defenses overshifted way to the left. Snap the weight, he's going to pass on third and three. Out in the left flat, it's batted down beautifully by Bob Hardy. And almost intercepted by Tommy Atkins. Well, it's up to the balls now, fourth down and three, as they were passing on a third and three. Throwing into the out of bounds to Roger Rockwell. Very, very fine defensive maneuver by left half back Bob Hardy. Meilinger in safety, back to the Kentucky 16. Jimmy Wade in punt formation at the volunteer 34. Kentucky has rushed him well so far this afternoon. Here's his kick over the head of Schnellenberger. Meilinger moves up, lets it hit at the 26, 25, down to the 20, out of bounds on the Kentucky 14. Another great kick by Jimmy Wade. Wildcats will take over at its 14, first down and 10. Now we'll see the balls go into their usual game. Wildcats back up deep. Tennessee will try to be, be trying to create a fumble. Bob Hardy is at quarterback. Ralph Colon is at fullback. Joe Platt at right half, Meilinger at left half. Hardy, the quarterback, moves up. The backfield straight away. Tennessee in a five-man line. Snap, Hardy moving left, gives. Meilinger comes on out, tries to lateral, gets past the 15 and on up to about the 17. Bob Fisher, left tackle for Tennessee, made the tackle. Steve Meilinger carried a rule to the Kentucky 18, a gain of four. Second down and six. 12 minutes, 45 seconds in the third quarter. Kentucky leading 13 to seven. A bowl bid could be riding with the winner. Back straight away. Hardy moves in behind Tommy Atkins, calling signals, gets, fakes, gets back at the, to uh, Pallone. The fullback bangs away to the 20. Comes on out to the 24. It's close to the first down. It's first down. A clutch second down and six play by Ralph Pallone. Comes seven yards to the 24. <laughs> 
Kentucky ready to go on its 24, first and 10. Hardy takes most of the weak side to the right, comes out to the 25, is hit thrown back to the 24. Hardy that time was moving away from his blocking, which was set up to his left. John Powell, Bob Cloninger stopped him at the 25. One yard gain by Hardy, makes it second and nine. Wildcats moving to the line of scrimmage now. The backs remain straight away. Hardy moves in behind Atkins, takes, moves left. Gives off to Meilinger, who pitches back to Plone. He's out to the 30, blows his way on out to the 35. That's a first down, we believe. Bob Clevenger got him down. It's going to be very close to a first down. <coughs> Beautiful play by Meilinger. It's a first down. The ball came out to the 35 for Kentucky's 15th first down. Two straight first down for the Wildcats. Moved it from the 14 out to the 35 in their territory. Back to the straightaway. Hardy takes. Moves right. Gives. Platt fumbles. Here's a fight for the ball. And let's see who got it. Tennessee got it. Max Franklin. Tennessee playing for the fumble. Gets it. And they take over on the Kentucky. Joe Platt and Hardy trying to handle the ball in there close. The fumble was on the Kentucky 36. And that's where the Volunteers take over. So now the Volunteers get their break. And they'll be playing to go ahead in this ball game. The state trails six points. Timeout has been taken by Tennessee. Stopping the clock with ten and a half minutes in the third quarter of play. Ball fans hoping it up here now at Stall Field. Trying to get things going. Across the way, UK is going to hoop it up. Let's see if we can pick up their yell. Darius McCord has been injured. We're having some jersey changing down on the field. It looked like Hyde and Franklin, the left end and wing back, exchanged jerseys, which would make Hyde be wearing 21 and Franklin 24 if they did exchange jerseys. Tennessee wears a very, very thin jersey, but you can grab a hold of it. You can easily rip it off a man's back. Volunteers on the Kentucky 36 now, first and 10. Big plays coming out, big plays. Tennessee could tie this ball game up and even go ahead on this one series right here. Single wing is right, the snap is the weight, and he's going to throw for it. He has plenty of time, backs up to the 50 now and throws one all the way down. He's got a man in the open, he's got it on the five and goes down to the two. It paid off as Jimmy Wade looked one all the way down to the two-yard line. It was Mac Franklin, we believe, who exchanged jerseys with Jerry Hyde that got it on the five and went to the two. 34-yard pass play. Tennessee threatening to get right back in this ball game now as the passes have been what's hurt the Wildcats the most here. On the Wildcat two, first down, goal to go. <laughs> And the Volunteers come from two touchdowns behind and tie it up, as did Kentucky last year. They line up single wing right. Snap comes back to Jimmy Wade. Takes a pass, runs right, scores. Touchdown to the save. All game tied up, Shires coming into the Tennessee lineup for a big extra point kick, which could give Tennessee the lead. Kentucky looked overpowering in the first half, and now Tennessee, in the closing seconds of the second quarter and in this early second half, are looking overpowering. They tied the score up and are threatening to go ahead. Tennessee gained only 21 yards in the whole first half. They gained 34 yards just then on a pass play, and Wade has scored both touchdowns. Shires back to try for a very important extra point. Could be the lead. Shires kicks. The kick. Good. Tennessee leads. 14-13. Now listen to the roar here at Stall Field.
passes against the Wildcats have given Tennessee two touchdowns and the Volunteers lead after being down 13 to nothing. Joe Platt, Ralph Pallone, Steve Meilinger moves back as the deep men as Kentucky for the first time this afternoon trails. Bob Fisher will kick off from the plastic tee at the Tennessee 40. Meilinger, the deep man, stands at about the 7. Pallone to his left and Platt to his right at about the 10. Fisher kicks. High. Platt moves up. He's got it at the 15. Comes out to the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35. Comes up to the 37 on a very fine run back by little Joe Platt. Kentucky fumbled the ball at its 35 where Tennessee scored in two plays. Bill Barbies made the tackle on Platt at the 37. Kentucky trailing 14-13. Takes the ball first and 10 on its 37. Backfield straight away. Hardy Mosen gets it going right. Gives up to Joe Platt. Blasts his way out to the 44. Tennessee tackle made there by Jimmy Wade and Mac Franklin. The left end. Gain on the play of seven yards. Makes it second and three. Hardy ready to go now. Moe's right. Gives in to Platt. Blasts in there to about the Kentucky 47. Close to the first down. Bill Barbish in there for Tennessee to make the tackle. Also Bob Cloninger. <coughs> Close enough to stop the clock. Eight and a half minutes here in the third quarter and measure for the first down. And the second down and three play that got about three yards. Joe Platt carried the kickoff back to the 37 and has run it twice. It's first down. Wildcats get first down upfield on their 47. Tennessee leading 14-13. Kentucky out of the huddle now and up to the line of scrimmage. The backfield straight away. Meilinger and Platt at halfbacks. Pallone at fullback. Hardy quarterbacking. Goes in behind Tommy Atkins. Tennessee's in a five-man line. Hardy takes. Gives to Pallone. Comes up past midfield. Goes to the Tennessee 49. John Powell tripped him up in there for the Volunteers. And they rule that he was down at the midfield strike. Three-yard gain by Pallone. Second down and seven for the Wildcats. About 21 yards out from the southern side of the field, playing in the shadows now. No clouds yet. Hardy takes, mows left, gives to Meilinger. He's down to the Tennessee 45 and on down to the 43. So about a seven-yard gain on a second down and seven play. It's going to be close. Charlie Coffey, the left guard, made the tackle for the Volunteers. Sighting it now to see if it is a first down. Clock still moving. It's first down. Wild catch on the Tennessee 42. First down and 10. Tennessee leading 14-13. Kentucky took a 13-0 lead in the second quarter. Here the Wild catch ready to move. Hardy takes, moving left, fakes, keep, pitches back to Platt. He's down to the 40, down to the 35, on down to the Tennessee 32. It's another first down, flag down in there in that pileup. And this is going to be a 15-yard penalty coming out against somebody. We haven't had one so far this afternoon. 15-yard penalty against Tennessee. A fight developed after Platt went down on the ground. Hyde and Barbie's both in there, dugging it out with Platt. And Tennessee is penalized to its 15-yard line. Kentucky will take over. First and 10 on the Tennessee 20. Volunteers are not ready as Kentucky gets ready to go. They have 12 men on the field. As the snap goes, Hardy takes, keeps, and goes to the 13. Tennessee had a man in the end zone that was ineligible. They had 12 men on the field, but nothing was called. Cloninger got Hardy on the 14 for a one-yard gain. Second down and nine. Seven minutes in the third quarter. Timeout, Tennessee. Here's a final score. Boston leading Temple 20 to nothing. At the half, Detroit leads Tulsa 21 to nothing. Final score, Michigan 20, Ohio State nothing. At the end of the third quarter, George Washington leads Richmond 21 to nothing. At the end of the third quarter, Maryland leads Alabama 21 to nothing. At the half, Davidson and Citadel tied 14-14. Final score, Dartmouth 34, Princeton 12. Final, Michigan State 21, Marquette 15. At the end of the third quarter, 
Notre Dame and Iowa, 7-7. At the half, Wisconsin leads Minnesota, 14-7. At the end of the third quarter, Penn State leads Pittsburgh, 17 to nothing. The half, South Carolina leads Walford, 21 to nothing. Here's Kentucky now, ready to go as we go back to play on the Tennessee 14 at second down and nine. Backfield straight away, Hardy takes, Moe's left, keeps, goes on down to the Tennessee 10 for a gain of about four. Roger Rodroff made the tackle. Third down and five as Rotroff pinned Hardy up there. Bob looked like he had intentions of lateraling. Rotroff did not give him an opportunity as he smothered the ball. A big third down and five play on the Tennessee 10. Hardy takes, Moe's left, hands off. Meilinger goes to the five. It's a first down, we believe. Meilinger went just inside the five. First down. Harris McCoy made the tackle on Meilinger. Now Kentucky on the Tennessee five. First down goal to go. Can the Wildcats come from behind? Hardy moves in behind Atkins for the snap. Gets it. Moe's left. Gives. Meilinger goes down to the one-yard line. Dave Meilinger on two carries has gone nine yards. Jerry Hyde finally got him down then. Second down goal to go. Kentucky on the Tennessee one. Tennessee leading 14-13. Kentucky up to the line of scrimmage. Hardy moves in behind Atkins, calling signals, takes, moves left, dies for it. He did not get it. Hardy dived into a solid wall of volunteers that time. He did not make the touchdown. Let's see where the ball is spotted. It's a foot away. Third down and a foot. Big play coming up. Five and a half minutes in the third quarter. Tennessee leading 14-13. Tennessee came from two touchdowns back. Kentucky come, can Kentucky come from one point. Hardy takes, drives into the right. Touchdown. Ron Hardy. a 67-yard drive. Climax for Bob Hardy on a third down and foot play. Hardy's tried to hold him, but Hardy slipped through that little bitty hole. And Kentucky's back on top. 1914. Great big extra point coming up here. Great big one. That will hold. Hardy will kick from the nine. Atkins over the ball. Platt down on the left knee. Signals. Here's the placement. Hardy kicks. Good. 20 to 14 for Kentucky. And across the way, the UK band. Snorting second half already as each team has scored a touchdown and an extra point. And we're right back where we were at halftime. Kentucky with a six point lead. Now 20 to 14. Kentucky getting ready to kick off. At the end of the third quarter, Harvard leads Yale 13 to nothing. Columbia leads Rutgers 21 13. And Lafayette leads Lehigh 26 to 7. Bradley Mills will kick off for Kentucky. Dave Kuhn of Louisville Mail is in there for the first time this afternoon. Big six foot two inch freshman center. Neil Lowry now in for the Wildcats. Jim Profitt now in. Bradley Mills getting ready to kick off. The ball flat on the ground. Mills moves forward, lobs it down to the 40, rolls down to the 35. Tennessee recovers on the 34. It almost went out of bounds. Diving for it. Getting it there was Mac Franklin, the left end. <laughs> Tennessee takes it first down and 10 on its own 34. Kentucky leads 20 to 14, five minutes in the third quarter. Restlessness now among the fans as each team has showed its ability to score. Single wing right for the Volunteers, which is the open side of the field. The Wildcats overship the defense. Bradley Mills, the deep man, playing in close in the 46. 
Snap goes back. Tailback Jimmy Wade takes it to Smothered. Profit leaps over the stack and drops him. No gain on that play. As tailback Jimmy Wade tried to angle right up the center. Ray Correll made a beautiful play on him. Correll's still down on the ground. Not because he's injured, but he's just now able to get up on his feet. As the volunteers finally come off of him. It's second down and 10, Tennessee, from their 34. We've seen great, tremendous line play by Kentucky this afternoon. Four minutes in the third quarter. Tennessee lines up, balance line, single wing right. Kentucky is in a seven-man line, almost an eight. Snapped away, hands to Schwanger, runs off the weak side. Good blocking up to the 40, on out to the 45. Correll stops him from going to the 46. That's a first down, Tennessee, as Schwanger, running off the weak side, gets 11 yards. Joe Platt made the tackle for Kentucky, the right halfback. Ted Swanger came right to the 45 for an 11-yard gain on second and 10. So the Volunteers have their first down. The ball at the hash mark from the southern side of the Tennessee 45. First down and 10, single wing right. Very high, the wing back outside right in by just about a yard and a half. It's almost uh, a yard. Over the ball, the snap goes back to Wade, hands off, Swanger off the weak side once again, is caught this time at the 47 on a beautiful play by Dave Kuhn, backing the line, and Jim Profit right in. Tom Tracy now in the fullback for Tennessee. And the ball was one yard upfield of the 46. Second down and nine. Wildcats line up, one, two, three, four back from the ball to put the uh, power of their defensive line on the side where Ten Tennessee throws the single wing backfield, which is right to the open side of the field. Over the ball is Cloninger. The snap is back to Jimmy Wade. He's going to pass. Down the middle, his man fell down on the Kentucky 45, Roger Rotroff. And the ball went harmlessly into the ground at the 40. Rotroff lost his balance with nobody near him. Third down and nine on the Tennessee 46 for the balls. Two and a half minutes in the third quarter. Kentucky 20, Tennessee 14. Mills, Chateau, and Joe Platt, deep men for Kentucky. It's safety man Bradley Mills back in the 38. <coughs> Kentucky, Kentucky loosening up the defense now, expecting a Tennessee pass, apparently. Jimmy Wade, tailback, will be the man throwing. Snap is back. Wade's going to run. He's hit behind the line of scrimmage with a flag on the line. Kentucky may have been offsides. Neil Lowry made the tackle back in the 41. There was offsides on the play, though. Let's see what it is. The ball is back to the Tennessee 41. Offsides for the Wildcats. Tennessee taking the penalty. What is now third down and four for Tennessee on Kentucky's 49. Many times this afternoon, about three, we believe, that Kentucky has been injured severely. When Tennessee lost yardage, Kentucky was offside. It's third down and four now instead of third and nine. And Tennessee's on the Kentucky 49, trailing by only six points, 20 to 14. Line balance, single wing right. Kentucky in a six-man line. Snap back to Wade, fakes... Does give off, and here it is, down to the 40, down to the 35, Platt got him down on the 26. As Tom Tracy, the fullback again, angles off the weak side, and Tennessee banging right back into the ball game. Joe Platt got on, him, got on uh, Tracy's back and rode him down at the 25. Tennessee, now first down and 10 on the Kentucky 25. Timeout, Kentucky. It's the Wildcats with a 20 to 14 lead. Are getting in hot water as Tennessee has backed them up to their 25, and the Volunteers threatening to come right back into this football game. As Kentucky, up in the middle part of the second quarter, took a 13 to nothing lead, Tennessee tied them up with a late touchdown in the second period and bounced right back for the first score in the second half for a 14 13 lead. Then we saw the Wildcats march 67 yards to take what they have right now, a 20 to 14 lead. And it's still anybody's football game. With two minutes and six seconds in the third quarter, Dan Sikanovich replaces Mac Franklin at left end. Another Tennessee substitute. Ussery, Bob Ussery, right tackle is coming in. Apparently, Darius McCord is being lifted. Ussery now reporting to the officials, and it is McCord that comes out of right tackle position for Tennessee. 
Now here is Bill Hubbard, third spring left guard from Greenville, Tennessee, making his first appearance. And coming out is Frank McCroskey. <clears throat> Jerry Hyde a moment ago caught a long 34-yard pass from Jimmy Wade that set up Tennessee's second touchdown for Jimmy Wade to go over standing up. Caught it on the Kentucky five and went to the two. Now we go for these important plays. Tennessee on the Kentucky 25, first down and 10. The wing back is out wide. Jimmy Wade at tailback. Snap goes to Tracy, the fullback. He's got good blocking down to the 25 and cut down at about the 22 and a very fine play by Joe Platt. Platt playing very excellent defensive football here this afternoon. Got Tom Tracy at the 22 after a gain of three on the play. Second down and seven for Tennessee. Minute and 45 seconds in the third quarter. The ball's trying to tie the football game up with a chance to take the lead. Tied the wing back this time is into his normal position. The single wing is right toward the open side of the field. The snap is back to Wade, the tailback, he's going to pass, back to the 30, downfield it goes, it's intercepted, back to the five-yard line by Bradley Mills, comes out to the 10, on up to the 15. Bradley Mills did a beautiful job, as that ball was batted up in the air, he took it off to the five, and came out to the 15, and Mills makes another good move. He scored Kentucky's second touchdown. Robert got him, it was pitched to Jerry Hyde, the wing back. Timeout has been taken by Kentucky, as they throttle the Tennessee drive. With a minute and 10 seconds in the third quarter. Bradley Mills' return is back to the 15 yard line. Now, with a timeout, we've got to pause for station identification. This is the Standard Oil Sports Network. You're listening to WVLK, Lexington. Once again, this is Claude Sullivan speaking from Stall Field, where Kentucky leads Tennessee 20 to 14. Herbie Hunt has come in at quarterback for Kentucky. Here's some other late scores at the half. Oklahoma leads Nebraska 16 to 7. At the half, Rice leads TCU 7 to 6. At the end of the third quarter, Auburn leads Clemson 39 to 19. Final score, Penn State 17, Pittsburgh nothing. At the half, Missouri leads Kansas 7 to nothing. Final score, Holy Cross 20, Fordham 7. Kentucky ready to go now on its 15. First down and 10, dangerous territory. Chateau at left halfback, Bradley Mills at right halfback, and Tom Fillion is at fullback. Atkins over the ball, Hunt calling signals, keeps, moves right, gives off. Flag down on the play as racing out as uh, Tom Fillion past the 20 and on up to about the 23. The flag was down back in the 16, and let's see what's been called. It'll be first down and 15. Once again, Kentucky draws a damaging five-yard penalty. Wildcats getting backed up deep now with 64 seconds in the third quarter. Kentucky leads Tennessee 20 to 14. Wildcats line, split, backfield straight away. Hunt moves in, shifts out the punt formation. Bradley Mills is the deep man. Here's Jimmy Wade going back to the 40 as Mills stands back in the end zone, gets the snap. His kick is away, giving Wade plenty of time to handle it at the 50. Wade's back down to the 45, cuts to the right, getting some blocking now, comes down to the 40 as Jim Puffett got him around the ankle and wouldn't let go. Wade went down on the 40. So Tennessee is back in possession. First down and 10 on the Kentucky 40. There are 43 seconds in the third quarter. Herbie Hunt coming out. Dick Maloney has replaced Hunt. 42 seconds as the clock is stopped. Ball declared ready for play now. Tennessee uses the close type of huddle back just in Tennessee territory. Kentucky with a 20 to 14 lead now, waiting for the balls. Tennessee coming to them. Balance line with a single wing right. Jimmy Wade, the big gun of the ball attack in the tailback slot. Oh, the ball is Cloninger. The snap goes back to Wade, running right. He's going to pass. Comes through there, and Correll kicks him at the 40 and pulls him back to the 41. Nice play by Ray Correll, Kentucky's great left guard. Joe Cook, Neil Lowry also went on the play with Duke Cornute. Jimmy Wade, or Jimmy Wade was down on the 41. Loss of one yard. 
Second down and 11 for the Volunteers. Tom Tracy's now in at fullback. There are 15 seconds in the third quarter. The clock has started operated once again here at Stall Field. Ten seconds to go. Tennessee moves up to the line of scrimmage with seven seconds to go. We may have the final play of the third quarter now. There are four seconds to go. Over the ball is Conninger. Two seconds to go. The snap is in time. And Tennessee's last play of the quarter. Pass out in the left flat to uh, Rockroft. Caught at the 35. Check that. It was Hyde, the wing back, who caught it at the 35. It's not a first down. And the third quarter is over. Kentucky 20. Tennessee 14. Five-yard gain on the play. As the pass went down to the 35, a gain of six. It'll be third down and five for Tennessee when we come back to play in the fourth quarter. Well, we've got 15 minutes to play. What'll it be? Not long now before we'll know. So let's go back again to Claude Sullivan. Meilinger is back in the Kentucky lineup. Bob Hardy and Joe Platt have come back in. There are your three deep men. And Tennessee is coming out with one of the, perhaps the most important plays of the afternoon. On the Kentucky 35, 18 yards out from the southern side of the field. Third down and five. Al Hubbard is now blocking back. Ray Chapman is now in its center as Cloninger is out. The wing back is out to the left. Wade takes. He's going to pass on third and five. Beautiful protection downfield. He's got a man wide open on the 20. Down to the 15. It's a first down as Dan Siganovich gets the pass. Tennessee's under Kentucky. 15, first down and 10. 20-yard pass as Dan Siganovich, the big left end, was wide open. Nobody near him. Joe Platt got him off his feet. Now Tennessee threatening to tie it up and go ahead. Go down to the Kentucky 15, about 20 yards out from the far northern side of the field. Tennessee breaks huddle, marches back to the line of scrimmage. They passed and got it on their third and five play, and it's been the passes in the clutch that have hurt the Wildcats. We're now in the fourth quarter, 45 seconds gone. Tennessee single wing right. Snap back to Wade. He's back to pass once again. He's right this time. Still plenty of time. The pass in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. It's good. And Sikonovic got it, and Tennessee tied it up 20-20. Great catch by Dan Sikonovic to tie this ball game up at 20-20. Now another big kick by Pat Shires coming up. Tennessee went 35 yards on two passes from Jimmy Wade to Dan Sikonovic to the left end. Can Shires give Tennessee the lead for the second time in the football game? Wade will hold with Shires kicking from about the 10. Chapman over the ball. Big one coming out. Here's the snap. The placement. Shires kicks. Good. And Tennessee takes the lead 21 to 20. Now listen to the fans roar for the volunteers. It's Fisher that will kick off. Jimmy Wade marching back and forth in front of the Tennessee line at the 35, talking with him, making sure everybody's got their assignments down. Meilinger's deep. The kick goes to Platt, standing at the Kentucky 10. He's got it. Angles to the center of the field, coming out to the 15, the 20, the 25. Angles right comes on up to the 30, where he is cut down. Nice 20-yard run back by Joe Platt as Ray Chapman got him off his feet at the Kentucky 30. The ball is 18 yards out from the northern side of the field. Now Tennessee must buck up defensively to contain these Wildcats. 13 minutes, 45 seconds in the football game. Bob Hardy at quarterback, Platt at right, Meilinger at left. Here's the snap. Hardy takes, gives off, racing through. There's Joe Platt almost to the 40. Quick opening play to right halfback Joe Platt. He's just short of a first down. Cut down at the 39 by Hal Heather, the blocking back. Second down and just a little less than a yard to go. Wildcats in their own 39. Tennessee leading 21-20. 
Backfield straight away as Hardy moves in behind Atkins, takes Moe's left, gives. Meilinger goes for the first down, is turned and thrown back to the 39. He did not make it. Meilinger bucking an outside left tackle for no gain. Now it's third down coming out. Roger Rockcroft and Hubbard doing the defensive work there for Tennessee. With pressure mounting up now on the Wildcats who are trailing. 21 to 20. This is an important play coming out. Bob Hardy mows in, takes Moe's right, keeps. He got his first down, comes right out to the 45, up to the 50, and down to the Tennessee 47. First down. Bob Hardy moves just outside right tackle, cut back into the center of the field, moves down to the Tennessee 47. Tennessee calls timeout, stopping the clock with 12 and a half minutes in the third quarter. Now Kentucky's in Tennessee territory with the Volunteers leading 21 to 20. There's some late scores for you. Into the third quarter, South Carolina leads Wofford 35 to nothing. At the half, Mississippi Southern leads Georgia 7 to nothing. At the end of the third quarter, Villanova leads Syracuse 14 to nothing. Final score, Harvard 13, Yale nothing. At the end of the third quarter, North Carolina 26, Virginia 7. At the end of the third quarter, West Virginia 48, North Carolina State nothing. At the end of the third quarter, Washington and Lee leading William and Mary 13 to 7. And the final score, Columbia 27, Rutgers 13. At the half, LSU leads Arkansas 9 to 6. Final score, Maryland 21, Alabama nothing. At the end of the third quarter, upset in the making, Duke 10, Georgia Tech 6. Kentucky on the Tennessee 47 now, first down and 10. 12 and a half minutes in the ball game, Tennessee with a one-point lead. Bob Hardy moves in with his backfield straight, takes, gives up the middle to Spillion, into the 45 and down to the Tennessee 40. Tom Fillion, seven-yard run before Bob Clarence, who's back in there at center, made the tackle for Tennessee. Second down and three. Wildcats settle up at the 50. Move out and on the line of scrimmage. Go captain Tommy Atkins goes over the balls. Sophomore quarterback Bob Hardy moves into the crouch, takes, moves left, gives off. Meilinger goes through to the Tennessee 35. Comes on down to a bottomless seat of 32. On the first down. Not an eight-yard run by Meilinger. As he goes to the Tennessee 32, Jerry Hyde finally got him off his feet. First down and 10. That's the 21st first down for the Wildcats. They are to the line of scrimmage now. Open side of the field just to their right. Hardy takes, gives. Fillion just hits the line of scrimmage. Is hit and thrown right straight back off his feet to the 33. Bob Fisher, right tackle, leans up and throws him back. There was a juggle there as Hardy handed off to Fillion. And they rule that Fillion got one yard to the 31. Second down and nine for Kentucky. Tennessee leading 21-20. Kentucky back in the line of scrimmage. Hardy moves in, calling signal, gets the snap, moves right, keeps, cuts in, goes down to the 28. Not a three-yard gain by Bob Hardy. Third down and six. There's McCord, made the tackle. Tennessee calls timeout. They've got an injury. Stopping the clock with 11 minutes in the football game here at Lexington. Score, Tennessee, 21, Kentucky, 20. So late scores at the half, Middle Tennessee leading Vanderbilt, 13 to 6. At the end of the third quarter, Wake Forest leading Furman, 19 to 14. Hal Barbish, or Bill Barbish, rather, Tennessee's first string blocking back, has been injured on the play. Here's Ralph Pallone coming into the Kentucky backfield, replacing Tom Fillion at fullback. Fillion gets a nice hand. He made one beautiful eight-yard run. And that puts Kentucky's first string backfield into operation. Bob Hardy is quarterback. Ralph Pallone at fullback, Meilinger at left half, and Platt at right half. Bill Barbish wants to stay in the game. He's hurt his left knee, but he's coming out. Coming in to replace him is Jim Butel, B-E-U-T-E-L, from North Tonawanda, New York. 5'10", weighs 180. Just slightly smaller than Bill Barbish. There are 11 minutes in this football game here at Stall Field. Bob Hardy is quarterbacking a very, very important third down and six play on the Tennessee 28. Kentucky has moved from its 30 to the Tennessee 28. 42 yards. Can they keep going? 
Here they go. Bob Hardy in. Back to the straight away. Hardy calling his signals. Takes. Moves right. Gives. Platt goes into the Tennessee 25. With a gain of about three on the play. Bob Fisher. Franklin made the tackle on him. Coming out now. Fourth down. Three to go. Third down and six. Joe Platt got three yards. Here's the big play coming out now. Fourth down. Three to go for Kentucky. Will they make it? Ten and a half minutes in the football game. Tennessee with a one-point lead. Marty Mose in, calling signals, takes, Mose left, hits, falls, and Tennessee gets the ball. Marty lost yardage on the play. A moment thought that he got to the line of scrimmage. John Powell hit him first. And Tennessee gets the ball, and it's 25, first down and 10. Kentucky moved 45 yards and then surrendered the ball on downs. Now Tennessee with a lead. Well, more than likely being playing conservatively. The single wing right. Jimmy Wade takes the snap. Running right. Beautiful blocking, but he's cut off his feet on a vicious block by Tommy Atkins. He blocked him off his feet at the 26 after a one-yard gain. Second down and nine for the Volunteers. Jim Butel at blocking back, Tom Tracy at fullback, and Jerry Hyde at wingback is the Tennessee lineup. Roger Rodroff out at this right end, but it's been Dan Sikonovich that's been the big gun for Tennessee. Offensively, Franklin's in there at that left end right now. Tennessee, single wing right. We're down to the fourth quarter. Nine and a half minutes to go. The handoff is to Swang to the fullback. He's out to the 30. Comes on up to the 33. Tommy Atkins finally got the tackle on him after he was able to get about seven yards. It was Schwanger rather than Tracy that was at fullback. Tennessee showing its power now with that lead on the board. It's third down and two, Tennessee. Very important play here for both teams. Nine minutes to go. Kentucky needs that ball and needs it badly to get back into this game as that one extra point stands between them and a tie game at the moment. Tennessee's on the line of scrimmage. Third down and two. They keep the ball if they get two yards. The snap is to Wade, handoff, Swanger off the weak side, comes out to the 34, is driven back to the 32. He does not leave his feet, now he's thrown down after the whistle is blown. It is not a first down. So Tennessee will have it fourth down. Joe Cook made a nice play for the Wildcats along with Pete Kirk. The ball was out field to the 34, where it's fourth down and one for Tennessee. Timeout has been taken. Eight minutes, 18 seconds in the ball game. Time is back in now. Off the Tennessee bench is Bob Bringle. Meilinger is being taken out. Bringle replaces Wade, who has the right sleeve almost torn off his jersey. Coming in for Kentucky is Dick Mitchell to go back in safety. He broke a finger up in the middle of the season. Tennessee punting from back on the 23-yard line. The snap is back. The kick blocked. Terrell batted it down on the 22. Rolls out to the 28. Trying to pick it up. It goes down to the 25. Kentucky got it. On the Tennessee 25. Pete Kirk and uh, Ray Terrell broke through there to try and block that punt, and they did. And Tommy Atkins recovered. Pete Kirk and Terrell came steaming through there and blocked that Tennessee kick back at the 25. That's exactly where the Wildcats surrendered the ball. Darius McCord of Tennessee almost got it. So Kentucky's back in possession on the Tennessee 25, first down and 10. They're back in the line of scrimmage, first down and 10. Handoff, Ralph Cologne goes up the middle, goes to the 28. The 23, rather. Gain of two yards, seven and a half minutes to go. John Powell, Tennessee's left guard, made the tackle. Second down and eight for the Wildcats. As fullback Ralph Cologne tries to do it, he gets two yards. Bob Hardy calling plays, important ones. Dick Mitchell is at left halfback. Joe Platt still at right. Cologne at full, and Bob Hardy quarterbacking. This is the combination that's trying to get Kentucky in the lead. Hardy takes, moves right, fakes to Cologne, going to pass. Downfield, bad pass incomplete at the 10. Hardy threw the pass right between Joe Platt and Al Zampino. Third down and eight. Seven minutes in the ball game. Tommy Atkins after the ball, watching it being spotted. It's now back to the Tennessee 24. 
Make a third down and nine. Big plays coming out here, two of them. Bob Hardy and the Wildcats now talking with the officials who comes back into their huddle, and let's see what's be being done. Timeout has been taken and now declared back in. The clock has not started, however. Kentucky up to the Tennessee 24, third down and nine. Bob Hardy mows in, needing big yardage. He slips, falls, hands to Pallone. Pallone down to the Tennessee 20, the 15, the 10, the 15, the 5, he scores. Ralph Pallone. Bob Hardy almost fell down. Handed the ball to Pallone, who went down to the 20, down to the 15, cut left and went all the way. Pallone goes 24 yards, third down and nine, and Kentucky leads 26-21. Great big extra point coming out with six minutes, 58 seconds to go. Bob Hardy will try with Joe Flam holding. Hardy limbers up the kicking foot. He's kicked two for three, a big one right here now. Very important. Tennessee's kicked all three of theirs. Here's the snap. Hardy kicks. Good. <laughs> 27-21, and here's the crowd right now. Stallfield at Kentucky scored 27 points against Tennessee and beat them. They got seven minutes standing between them and victory though now, and they've got 11 volunteers that are still plenty tough. 27 21 Kentucky as Bradley Mills will kick off. The ball is laid flat on the ground. Wildcats lining up along the 35 now. Howie Snellenberger, Dick Chateau. Ray Corral, Dave Kuhn, Gil Cornell. Now here's Bradley Mills moving forward. Lobs a short one down to the Tennessee 35, down to the 32. It's picked up, coming out with it to the 45 is uh, Tennessee halfback, uh, rather, in Ed Campo. Campo did a nice job in handling that one. The Wildcats got him down there with help from uh, Ralph Pallone. Duke Cornell was in there. And Campo was down on the 46. First down in Tennessee's 46, 10 yards to go for the balls. Six and a half minutes to go. Kentucky leading 27 21. Tennessee up to the line of scrimmage, single wing right. Tailback is now Bobby Bringle. His Wade is out of there. The snap is back to Bringle. He's going to pass. Protection downfield. Pass intercepted by Atkins at the 44. Out to the 45. On up to the 50. Nope, he didn't make it. He was cut down out there by Rockcroft. Tommy Atkins intercepted the pass. Tennessee's got a man out. And the big senior from down to Corbin, Tommy Atkins, has got the football for Kentucky. Six minutes to go. Time is taken out. As Tennessee has a man down, big Bob Fisher, their tackle. Wanger up into the Atkins when it looked just for the moment he was going to make it to the 50. Coming into the ball game now for Kentucky is Ray Callahan at fullback. Air Bryant now with two minutes before he can get some of these big guns back in. He's going to try and rest them as much as possible. Joe Cook coming out. Herbie Hunt coming in. Now coming back out. Now comes back in. As Coach Paul Bryant wanted to say something to him. Young Ray Callahan in there at fullback. He's down at 11 in Kentucky. He's a 20-year-old sophomore. Into the Tennessee lineup now. Strides pick number 42. 48, rather, Dan Butler from Norfolk, Virginia. He's left tackle, and Fisher is being helped off the field. That was a great interception by Tommy Atkins of Bobby Bringle's pass. Jim Owens and Bill McCubbin are working up on top of the scoreboard for Kentucky this afternoon. They have field glasses and telephone up there. 
where they're spotting Tennessee line play and perhaps some uh, weakness in the Kentucky line play. Here's Tommy Atkins shooting out of that huddle. Backfield straight away is Herbie Hot Mojan. Calling signals with six minutes in the ball game. He fumbles and Chateau fell on it back in the 45. Three yard loss. That's the second time Herbie Hunt's fumbled this afternoon. A moment ago, it led to a Tennessee touchdown. Second down and 13, five minutes, 40 seconds in the ball game. Very important now that Kentucky keep this football. Wildcats up in the line of scrimmage. Five and a half minutes to go. Hunt calling signals in behind Tommy Atkins. Gets the ball, moves right hand off Bradley Mills. Tracks into the Tennessee line for maybe two yards. Clock still moving. Another minute and 20 seconds before Kentucky can get some of those first string boys back in there. Ball is up in the 47 for the gain of two, where it's third down and 11. Cloninger and McCord made the tackle for Tennessee. Hunt taking plenty of time in the huddle. Yo Cook was taken out of there a moment ago because he was injured. Replaced by Neil Lowry. Herbie Hunt moves in now. His third down play, 11 yards to go. Takes, mows back, hands off, angling out to the left as Bradley Mills up to the 50 and down to the Tennessee 47. Inside the final five minutes now. Tackle down there made by Cloninger and Catwell, the right end. Bradley Mills went to the Tennessee 47. Gain of six yards. It's fourth down and five for Kentucky. Four and a half minutes to go. Brangle backs up in safety for Tennessee. Bradley Mills will be the man putting here. Kentucky's on the Tennessee 47. Line up in the P, shift out. Bradley Mills goes back deep. Very important punt to get away. Kentucky scored the touchdown that has him on top on a block kick. Here's the punt. Bradley Mills, beauty, way back into the end zone. Bradley Mills boomed that one high and away. It goes back into the fence, about 10 yards behind the goal post. Tennessee will take it out on the 20, where they'll have it first down and 10. Cantrell, the big right end, went up way into the air to try and get to it, but Mills boomed it way over his head. Four minutes and eight seconds to go as Kentucky leads 27-21. Now Tennessee going for the works. They need six points to tie, the extra point to win or get the lead. The Volunteers move up on the line of scrimmage and throw the single wing off to the right. That's where Kentucky overshifts the defense to meet it. Callahan standing in the gap. The handoff. Wang to the fullback comes through the hole up to the 30. On out to the 33. Hit and cut down as he gets to the 35 for a 15-yard run. Big Ted Swanger. Kentucky's got a man down on the field. Kentucky injury is Swanger. The big fullback comes out 15 yards. The clock stopped with four minutes to go. Here's Joe Cook, Dave Kuhn, and Bob Hardy coming back in the Kentucky lineup. It is Pete Kirk of Kentucky that's injured on the play. Neil Lowry, Dick Maloney, Ray Callahan coming out of the Kentucky lineup. Now here's Bill Wheeler coming in, and uh, Pete Kirk is coming out. Dick Chateau coming out, Joe Platt coming in, and Jimmy Wade now back in at tailback for Tennessee. Tennessee's on its 35, first down and 10 with four minutes to go. The automatic timeout here. Both ball clubs have pretty much come back in with front line reserves. Tommy Atkins is being lifted. He's played a great game, intercepted that Tennessee pass a moment ago. The Volunteers ready to go. They line up with single wing over to the left. They just wheeled off a 15 yard run by Big Swanger. Jamie Wade, Jimmy Wade is a quarterback tailback now. Gives it to Swanger, running to the weak side. Schnellenberger turns him back in, comes out to the 35 and on up to the 38. Schnellenberger in there to make the tackle along with uh, Joe Cook and Ray Carell. Schnellenberger that man, that time went out and was uh, fending off Jerry Hyde, the wing back, and turned Jimmy Wade back in, and he was cut down at the 39. Four-yard game, second down and six Tennessee. Three and a half minutes to go. Kentucky leading 27-21. Volunteers out of the huddle, back to the line of scrimmage now. The single wing right. Kentucky has gone into that almost an eight-man line. Overshifting to the left, Tennessee single wing right, snap back to Wade, he's going to throw this time, he's being rushed and caught, thrown down, back on the 26. Great play there by Schnellenberger and Ray Correll. Ray Correll got him first and Schnellenberger came in to make sure he didn't get away, back in the 26, 13-yard loss. 
third down and 19 Tennessee. And watch out for this one. Three minutes to go. Jimmy Wade, you can just about count on this one, is going to be shooting for the worst. He shot along with the Rockwell last week that set up an ex a field goal that beat Florida. So let's watch this one. Third down, Tennessee on its 26, 19 to go. Tracy now fallback, back, snapped to Wade. He's going to throw for that long one. Here it goes, up to the left. It's complete to Sikhanovich at the 38. Dances up to the 40 and he's out of bounds. It's not a first down. Wade fired to Rockcroft, running into the left side at about the 40, and Rockcroft advanced up to the 41. Two and a half minutes to go. Tennessee will get it on the 40. It is fourth down and five to go. Sikhanovich made that nice catch, better than Rockcroft. Up on the 41 in Tennessee territory, up on the 40, rather, it's fourth down and five. The clock was stopped as Sikhanovich went out of bounds. Two minutes and 34 seconds exactly. Kentucky is not putting a safety man back. Gonna let Tennessee run for it. They line up, single wing. They're gonna try for that important four yards. Wade's gonna pass. Palel's got him. Slips off. He passes up field to the 45, and he got the first down. Correll almost got him, and Wade slipped away. Tennessee gets the first down. As pitching out to Jerry Hyde, the wing back. Hyde went out of bounds at about the Tennessee 47 or 48. Let's see where it's spotted. Two minutes, 28 seconds to go, and Tennessee is getting new life up on its 48. Kentucky is playing for that deep pass. In other words, letting Tennessee throw the short ones, but trying to stop the long one. Tennessee lines up, open field on the left, and the single wing is right. Kentucky's back in that seven-man line, shifting out to a 6-2-1. Two, two, pass to Wade. He's going to throw. Out in the left flat, the pass is complete to the 44, and there's Pratt hitting him and throwing uh, Sikhanovic back to the 49. There again is Kentucky giving Tennessee that short pass. Trying to protect from a long pass or maybe a short one going for deep yardage. Sikhanovic was off his feet. They roll up to 46 in Kentucky territory. Six yard gain, second down and four. Tennessee calls timeout to stop the clock with two minutes and six seconds to go. And Ussery replaces McCord at Tennessee's right tackle. Two minutes, six seconds in the football game, and Tennessee is penalized five yards for delay of the game. In other words, they did not have a timeout coming, and they're penalized back to their 49. Where the second down and nine to go instead of second down and four. And of course, they did not get the timeout. And by delay of the game, the clock keeps moving. We're inside the final two minutes now. Substitution by Tennessee, and that's another five yards. Tennessee penalized back to the 44. Now third down and 14. Minute and 55 seconds to go. The clock's still moving as Tennessee is trying to stall. Minute and 50 seconds to go. Kentucky leading 27 21. Tennessee open field to the right. Their single wing is angled out that way. The snap is back to Jimmy Wade. He's going to throw. He's going to throw deep this time. The pass way downfield is incomplete on the 34. Nice play by Bradley Mills. Right in there with Jerry Hyde, the wing back. A minute, 35, 37 seconds to go as the incompleted pass does stop the clock for Tennessee. But now it is fourth down and 14 to go on their own 44. 27 points scored by Kentucky 35 years ago. Oh, rather, in 1935, almost 18 years ago to the day that beat Tennessee. And Will Lee's 27 points hold up for a minute and 37 seconds. Tennessee is not going to punt fourth down and 14. They're going to try and go. Wait a minute, is it fourth down? No, but it's third down. A correction there on us. Wade, back to pass, is rushed. Throws downfield, intercepted back on the 40 as Bob Hardy gets it up to the 45. The 50 runs right to the Tennessee 45. Bob Hardy, great play. Jimmy Wade was the man who got Bob Hardy off his feet. And Kentucky takes over on the Tennessee 45, first down and 10. The clock has been stopped with a minute and nine seconds to go. And now let's see what's going to be done. Can Kentucky control the ball for 69 seconds? Here's Arvin Bivin coming in to tackle. Duke Duke comes out. There's a lot of jubilation being pinned up on that Kentucky bench. They want to release it if it is justified. Tennessee has twice come from behind to take the lead. And Kentucky has twice come from behind to get the lead. 
The Wildcats led by 13 to nothing midway of the second quarter. Only to have Tennessee go ahead 14-13 in the third period. Kentucky went ahead 20-14. Tennessee went ahead 21-20. And now the Wildcats lead 27-21. Bob Hardy ready to go. Takes quarterback sneak. He goes one yard to the 44. Falls down to keep the clock going. There are now 60 seconds in the football game. It's second down. Kentucky on the Tennessee 44. Nine yards to go. We're inside the final minute. 54 seconds to go. And the Wildcats have become very, very slow. 50 seconds to go. If they are penalized for delay of the game, that stops the clock. So they don't want to do that. They don't want to take too much time. 43 seconds to go. Bob Hardy intercepted the pass right there in the clutch. Tommy Atkins intercepted the a moment ago in the clutch. Ready to go. 35 seconds to go. Hardy in there calling plays now. No snap yet. Kentucky is not going to snap the ball. There are no hands out there on it. The officials waiting for a delay of the game. There it is. Stopping the clock. 26 seconds to go. Now Kentucky will have to snap it. Leo Strange was over the ball, but he did not put his hands on it. Kentucky is penalized back to the 50. It is second down. 14 to go. 22 seconds to go. And the clock goes in motion. 20 seconds to go. Bob Hardy leads him out of the huddle and up to the line of scrimmage now. Strange puts the hands on the ball this time as Bob Hardy moves in for the snap. There are 10 seconds to go. He takes. He falls. There are 8 seconds to go. Has Kentucky beaten Tennessee? Have they? They sure have. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is hard to get in the picture down on the field. As these 1953 Kentucky Wildcats have done something that no other group of Wildcats have been able to do since 1935. And ironically, it was 18 years ago that Kentucky scored 27 points to beat the Volunteers. Kentucky's cheerleaders have just come across the field and taken the beer barrel. The beer barrel is being taken over across the way on the Kentucky side of the field. Tennessee dejectedly is leaving the football field, and there's still a lot of handshakes among the Kentucky Wildcats and uh, the Tennessee Volunteers. Down on the field, of course, there's a lot of uh, ceremony going on, a lot of folks being carried off the field, and especially Bear Bryant. Dave Kuhn is up uh, riding on somebody's shoulders, and now he's down. And uh, you're going to see a tremendous amount of celebration here tonight as Kentucky has come from behind twice to beat Tennessee 27-21. We'll recap all the thrilling plays for you here in just a moment. Well, Dad, we have very little voice left. That's true, but right now we perhaps don't have too much to use it for. Currently, the Kentucky Wildcat is in his cage being rolled across Stall Field. And we imagine if the old boy knew the facts, he'd be right proud of everything. You know, in this football game here this afternoon, one of the most miraculous things about it is nobody has even started home yet. Nobody is on their way home except the Tennessee football team, which right now is visible to us, moving out in behind the northern stands across the way. Tennessee getting ready to go back to the dressing room. The Wildcats have already moved into their dressing room. And off to our left here, down in the western end zone, a crowd of fans moving in and around the cage of Colonel, who's a real live Kentucky Mountain Wildcat. And uh, we imagine the old Colonel's going to get pretty fired up. Tennessee's got one football player still left out on the field, still doing some handshakes. It's not Jimmy Wade or Jimmy Wade, although it looks about like him. We're unable to spot his number. Tennessee played a great football game here this afternoon. It looked like Kentucky was going to win and win maybe by a big score. As they scored in the first quarter with 9 minutes and 11 seconds still to go, Kentucky took the opening kickoff and banged away right down the field to the Tennessee 15-yard line. There they fumbled. Joe Platt, or rather Meidinger, or rather uh, Pallone, the fullback, and Bob Hardy trying to hand off fumble. Tennessee recovered and ran one play. Jimmy Wade fumbled. The ball was recovered by Howie Schnellenberger. And on three straight plays, Meidinger ate up 17 yards and scored. Bob Hardy kicked the extra point. Kentucky led 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. The Wildcats opened it up to 13 to nothing in the second quarter, about midway through that period. The greatest run in the 68-yard drive was that of Bradley Mills and Tom Fillion. When the handoff was from Hardy to Bradley Mills, he went down to about the Tennessee 31. There he pitched the lateral out to Tom Fillion, who bowled his way on down to the Tennessee 12-yard line. There was a pass in the end zone to Jim Prophet. He had it and dropped it. Then Bradley Mills went to the Tennessee 5. 
And on the next play, Mills went over standing up on a great deceptive play by Bob Hardy, faking to keep and then pitching out to Mills, who went over standing up. Hardy missed the extra point, and down until the final seconds, it looked like that extra point might mean the difference in victory. Tennessee came back to score as the clock stopped working in the first half. There were only three or four seconds to go, and Jimmy Wade scored for Tennessee to climax a 25-yard drive as Tennessee got it on a fumble by Herbie Hunt. Wade went over from five yards out after a pass play, went to the Kentucky four-yard line. It was 13-7 at halftime. And in the, in the third quarter, each team racked up a touchdown, and Tennessee came back to uh, get the touchdown first. Jimmy Wade firing to Jerry Hyde, the wing back, a 34-yard pass that went to the two-yard line, and Wade went over on the first play with Pat Shires kicking the extra point. Tennessee had come back in the game from two touchdowns back and gone into a 14-13 lead, and then a 67-yard drive by Kentucky. Climaxed as Bob Hardy went over from three uh, on third down from one foot back and kicked the extra point. Kentucky took a 20 to 14 lead, and that's the way it was at the end of three quarters of play. However, after only 50 seconds of play in the fourth quarter, Tennessee scored again, 35 yards on two pass plays from Jimmy Wade to Dan Sikanovic, who made the second catch down deep in the end zone. And a circus catch it was. Pat Jars kicked the extra point, and Tennessee took the lead, 21-20 down in the fourth quarter. Kentucky battled back, lost the ball the first time. And then the second drive, a punt was blocked as Pete Kirk and Ray Correll came screaming through to block the punt by Darius McCord. It went back to the Tennessee 25-yard line where the Wildcats got it. And third down and nine, Bob Hardy slipped. He almost fell. And as he went down, he handed the ball to Ralph Pallone, who went 24 yards for the touchdown that won the ball game. Bob Hardy kicked the extra point to make it 27-21. These are not official. But these are the way our statistician Bob Cox, and he hates for us to refer to him as unofficial, but they are. We have the Kentucky Wildcats ripping off uh, ten first downs in the first quarter, three more in the second, six in the third, and two in the fourth quarter. For Tennessee, they did not get a first down in the first quarter. They got two in the second quarter, three in the third, and three more in the fourth. Kentucky intercepted three Tennessee passes. Two of them inside the final five minutes, one by Atkins and the other by Tom uh, Bob Hardy. And that one by Hardy gave it to Kentucky for the final two minutes. And the Wildcats uh, were able to stall it out. Final 137, incidentally. Very, very few penalties here this afternoon. Very few. Kentucky was penalized 30 yards. Penalized, penalized, uh, Tennessee penalized 30 yards. This game here this afternoon was a classic. So let's give it, let us give you now the official final statistics on this football game. Tennessee got nine first downs. Kentucky got 23. On the ground, Tennessee gained 53 yards. Kentucky gained 313. Passing, Tennessee gained 126. Kentucky gained 27. Tennessee completed eight out of 19 passes, but Kentucky intercepted three of them. The Wildcats threw only seven passes, completed two of them. Tennessee kicked seven times and averaged 34 yards. Kentucky kicked three times and averaged 34 yards. Kentucky lost the ball three times on fumbles. Tennessee lost it once. The Wildcats were penalized 25 yards. Tennessee penalized 30. In passing, Hardy completed two of six for 27 yards. Jimmy Wade completed eight of 18 for 126 yards, won a touchdown to Sikanovich, and he had two intercepted. Bringle threw the other one, which Atkins intercepted. On the ground today, Bob Hardy carried the ball 19 times for 70 yards and one touchdown. Ralph Pallone carried the ball 12 times for 68 yards and one touchdown. Steve Meilinger carried the ball nine times for 45 yards and one touchdown. Bradley Mills carried it seven times for 30 yards and one touchdown. Tom Tracy of Tennessee got 43 yards and six carries. Ted Schwanger got 27 yards and six carries. In punting, Meilinger averaged 34, Mills averaged 33, and Jimmy Way of Tennessee averaged 34. In catching, Joe Platt got one for 15 yards for Kentucky. Now Pallone, or rather Steve Meilinger, caught one for 12 yards. For Tennessee, Jerry Hyde caught four for 70 yards. Siganovich caught four for 56 yards and one touchdown. Well, fans, that's it. And we would like to leave you with this, well, a somber warning because we want you to please do not celebrate too much and please be careful with a tremendous crowd in hand. 
Right now, we'd like to thank our hard-working crew here in the broadcast booth this afternoon. Ted Grizzard has been passing along all those good tips from the Standard Oil Company. Our spotters this season, Bob Cox and Bert Harbor, have done such a great job of spotting substitutes from both benches. And our engineer, Roy Watts, who's been so busy with all the technical details that he hasn't seen a game yet. And this afternoon, we'd like to thank Artie Kane, who's been here in the booth with us, doing such a fine job of keeping us posted on the other games around the nation. And as we wind up another season with the Kentucky Wildcats, we'd like to say what a pleasure it's been working with these fine fellows. And mentioning that, the Standard Oil Company of Kentucky and their dealers throughout Kentucky, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and Mississippi hope you've enjoyed these broadcasts of Kentucky's 1953 football games. They have endeavored to increase your listening pleasure in these games by holding their commercial announcements down to a minimum and not interrupting your train of thought with commercials at every opportunity. If you have enjoyed these broadcasts and the way they were handled, once you tell your standard oil dealer his sales help to make these broadcasts possible, and he will appreciate your comments. Remember, he's a man you can count on for dependable products and extra service. And now this is Claude Sullivan speaking from Stall Field on the campus of the University of Kentucky in Lexington. Uh, switching back down on the field now, the fans are tearing the goalposts down, both of them. They've taken the upper extremities of the bars completely loose. And all that remain are the bars attached to the ground and the crossbar, which carried three extra points for each team this year. The state police are trying to stop them from carrying it away. And we have some arguments going on right now as to who's going to get what goal post. But nonetheless, the two bars that extend upward past the crossbar, the four of them on both goal posts, have been completely dismantled, and the state police are trying to uh, recapture them. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the football games this season just about half as much as we've enjoyed being associated with the Kentucky football team, coaches, players, and athletic department personnel. Bernie Shively has just come down on the field and told the state police to go ahead and give the goalposts to the fans. So now they're going to tear them out of the ground with the roots. <laughs> The fans have already got the bar extending above the crossbar, but now we got about seven or eight men down there around the goalpost on the western end of the field that are trying to pull it out by the roots. It's in concrete, and those fellows are going to have a tough job. They're going to try and unscrew them, though, now, since it's assembled tight. And uh, the first attempt failed. Now we got another one from the other side. But anyway, when you come out tomorrow morning, we don't imagine there will be any goalposts on Stall Field. Right now, we'd like to wish you all a very bountiful Thanksgiving and a 27-21 Kentucky victory over Tennessee. This is the Standard Oil Sports Network.
tied up.